88, Jimmy Giles, too, and he might also have added number 42. The smashing, crashing, running back from the University of Southern California. This year, Tampa Bay's offense vastly improved with those three men. But tonight, the defense, which has slackened recently, must cope with that man, Walter Payton, one of the exceptional runners of our time and of all time. And this was a typical Walter Payton run. It can happen at any time when he gets the ball. That's what you'll see tonight. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers against the Chicago Bears. from Soldier Field in Chicago, Illinois. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers against the Chicago Bears. This is Frank Gifford, along with Howard Cosell and Fran Tarkenton. And this ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Datsun, where you find that in all the 1981 Datsuns, the greatest economy of all is quality. And by the Miller Brewing Company, brewers of Miller High Life. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. It's a sold-out house at Soldier Field in Chicago. The standings in the NFC Central Division tell you why this is an important game tonight. Atlanta beat Detroit yesterday. Detroit's now on a foot race. Tampa Bay with a win tonight would be only one behind. Chicago, which is trailing at the moment, always begins to play well at this time of the year. They've proved it the last two seasons. To tell you about those Chicago Bears, here's the Gipper. And they have been under fire. They have given up 72 points in their last two losses. They were blown out of the tub, 38-3, by Pittsburgh last Sunday. Here's Mike Fitz. He'll open at quarterback. He had to be relieved last week, and he might go that way again tonight. There's a question. Should it be Vince Evans or Mike Fitz? But coming back into the lineup tonight, a very versatile athlete, Roland Harper. He has not been in action since 1978. He's had multiple knee surgery, but he gives the Bears a different dimension. A heady, cerebral type of runner, and also a very good blocker for the likes of Walter Payton. He could make a change in an offense that has been sorely sagging here in Chicago. For Tampa Bay, well, they've got an offense there. Well, they really do, Frank, and, uh, but they need more big plays, Coach McKay says, and they're going to have to get them from one, Ricky Bell, the fine running back. Last year at this point in the season, Ricky Bell had 56 rushes for 253 yards. This year, Ricky Bell has only rushed the ball 41 times for 134 yards. They need more production out of Ricky Bell. Also on the defensive side of the field, Leroy Selma, the leader of the defense, one of the great defensive ends in football. Last year at this time of the season, he had six sacks. This year, only one sack. They need more big plays from that big fella, Leroy Selman, and maybe they'll get him tonight. Okay, Gifford, let's get this thing started. All right, both teams, of course, in the central division of the NFC, and both chasing the Detroit Lions and Billy Sims. Detroit falling yesterday, 4-1, and one, so Detroit will be looking on tonight. Tampa Bay has won the toss. They have elected to receive to the right. There was a sellout crowd anticipated for tonight, 64,000 plus. The game will be televised in the area. Gary Davis has dropped deep. There he is, number 28. A year ago, he was in a Miami Dolphin uniform. Came just before the start of the season. Bob Thomas will put it in the air and get this game underway for the Chicago Bears. Here's Bob Thomas. We will probably see two other Dolphins in action tonight. Former Dolphins for Tampa Bay. Tell you about them. Norris Thomas at cornerback and Neil Colsey. Neil Colsey will open up at safety for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Cedric Brown, their fine pre-safety man, still having troubles with a pulled hamstring. Well, and the ball keeps falling off the tee for Bob Thomas. I hope that is not a an luxury of things to come. <laughs> Well, Frank, the wind is always a factor in this stadium. It is quieter than normal, but it is picking up somewhat. The kicking game will be very important tonight. Bob Thomas gets it underway. Taken there by Danny Reese. And Danny Reese filled at the 20-yard line. Just short of the 20-yard line is Danny Reese. And 
just meet the offensive unit, Doug Williams, the third-year man out of Grambling, a very gifted athlete, Ricky Bell, the 1,000-yard-plus rusher of a year ago, the wide receivers, short, Isaac Hagan's out on the right, and, of course, Jimmy Giles is in a class by himself as far as receivers are concerned in this Tampa Bay offense, number 88. He can do it all, and this man, Doug Williams, likes to go to Jimmy Giles. Set to go, first and 10, Tampa Bay. The motion man is Hagan's. And off Ricky Bell. Ricky Bell turns the corner, picks up a quick five, moves out, moving out to the 25-yard line. It'll be second and five. And there they are, the front four. Allen Page in there with seven sacks. That was more than 18 teams in the NFL had in the first four games. Those are your linebackers. Tom Hicks in the middle. And, of course, the man that can really hit back there is Duck Plank at free safety. Tampa Bay. Looking over, a second down and five. We were just underway here in Chicago. Very good, lined up in the tailback spot. Ricky Bell, who would really prefer that. As a matter of fact, we have Giles back there and a smashing blow by Alan Page, drifting in from his right defensive tackle position to make the stop. Interesting thing with what the Bears did on defense that time, Howard. They went with a five-man defensive line, which is very unusual in professional football. But Buddy Ryan, the defensive coordinator, as we look at John McKay there, likes a multiple defensive set. They brought in the very talented second-year man, Al Harris, who has high hopes for him here. But 82, Alan Page, who they thought was dead two years ago, has come alive here in a Chicago Bear uniform. There's Neil Armstrong. The coach that Jim Finks plucked from your old team, the Minnesota Vikings. A loss of two, third down and seven. Interesting offensive set on that play. Giles in the backfield. He's now tied in. Williams to the air. Going deep. Attended there for his speedy wide receiver, Kevin House. And incomplete. Gary Fensick moving over defensively along with Alan Ellis to make the breakup for Chicago. It'll be fourth down. And the guy that made that defensive play possible was Jim Osborne. Here's the end of the play. You'll see that the ball is slightly underthrown. But the young quarterback, Williams, was hit as he was thrown by Jim Osborne, number 68, and that caused the underthrown football. On the fourth down, we see Tom Blanchard for Tampa. Von Lusby, recently acquired from Cincinnati, drops for the Bears. There he is, number 29. Returned punts and kickoffs for the Bengals a year ago. Bears showing the punt rush. They have 10 men at the line of scrimmage. They're coming after it. Blanchard hangs it up. Gets it to turn over, but it takes the Chicago Bear bounce and it's down at the 43-yard line. Hustling down there, Andy Hawkins. So the Bears begin with excellent field position, Giff. And they'll bring out Mike Phipps. And, of course, the setbacks. The man I spoke of a moment ago, Roland Harper. He could be tentative. He has not played in over a year. Walter Payton, of course, he is something special. He needs two yards to become the seventh leading NFL rusher in the history of this game. There's your offensive unit. You might recognize that name, Robin Earl. A year ago, he was playing as a setback. He has now moved up and starting at tight end. Tell you more about the difficulties the Bears have had at tight end as we move along in the game. First and ten. They marked it at the 44-yard line. Good field position. Quickly, the Spence to Ricky Watts. And down goes Watts. And let's meet the defensive unit. It'll be mostly a 3-4 you'll see tonight. And they've had trouble defensively, oddly enough. This Tampa Bay team that was number one in the entire NFL a year ago defensively. David Lewis, he plays that strong outside linebacker, and he'll really give you a pop. There's your secondary and a free safety. We will see Neil Colsey, Cedric Brown with the pulled hamstring in a game that we saw in our first Thursday night game in the opening week of the season. Could not get back into action tonight. Second down and 10. Quickly, it's Walter Payton, and he explodes out over the 45 to the 49, a gain of five. It'll be third and five. Keep in mind here, Gip, that the, the win again is a factor. It caused that short punt by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. As an offensive football team, the Bears have the win with them. This is the time they've got to really make things work for them. They've got to score points when you have the win with you because it's difficult to move the ball against the win in the stadium. Phipps brings the Bears up in four games, 46%. He's had one touchdown and five interceptions. And Walter Payton, with that pickup of five, has moved into seventh among the all-time NFL rushers. Pitts, no open man, and Pitts is going down. And he lines up David Logan, 
the nose tackle for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Right there is an important point. Tampa Bay's defense has been suffering because of the absence of Randy Crowder and David Logan, inexperienced, hasn't been producing in the manner that Crowder obviously could. If Logan can keep playing that way, improving, he'll shore up that defense in a hurry. That has to inspire the Tampa Bay defense because they've only had five sacks all year. Randy Crowder had two up before he went down with injury, and Logan making that play has got to be a spurt for him. Bob Parson. High kick that he finds will turn over. Reese is waiting for it at the 10, and it takes a fair bounce. Bears hustling to get down under it. They did not cover. Robert Fisher tried to get his hands on it. Number 85, he did not. So the Bears will have possession. They'll begin when we return at the 20-yard line. This ranch does... Venerable Soldier Field at Chicago, Illinois. First saw action, sports action here in 1924. Bears have been playing their home games here since 1971. First and ten, Tampa Bay, no score if you just joined us. Isaac Higgins in motion toward you. And the handoff is to Jerry Eckwood. Eckwood trying to find an opening over the left side, and he is buried under a swarm of bears, headed by Dan Hampton, number 99, and Jerry Muckenstern, number 58. There's Walla Payton, number seven now, among the all-time ground gainers. There's the graphic to show you exactly that. And he's only really just begun. If he can stay healthy, heaven knows, he could wind up very close to Jimmy Brown and the Juice. The rookie wide receiver for Tampa Bay, number 89, Kevin House in the lineup. Split out to the right, second down at 11. Williams with the draw play. Ricky Bell picks up four. That'll be third down at eight. Ricky Bell this year has not been the force that he was a year ago when he gained over 1,200 yards. Much of it has been that he has played from that fullback spot when he prefers to get into the tailback spot. Tonight we might see the return of Johnny Davis, a good blocking fullback who's been out with a sore ankle for Tampa Bay. Frank, now we're in a must-pass situation. Williams has got to go against that wind, but he's got a strong enough arm where the wind would bother him less than other quarterbacks. Third down, long seven. He can run. He'll have the first down easily. And Williams <laughs> wisely cruises out of bounds at the 35-yard line. First down, Tampa Bay. We told you he is a gifted athlete. You saw it right there. It's an interesting fact that Doug Williams is the leading rusher on the Tampa Bay team. We saw it in our Thursday night game, the opening week of the season, when he pulled the ball down and took it to the one-yard line on a clutch situation. Tampa Bay, of course, going on to win that game. 10 to 9. That's, it was Doug Williams who carried them. That's the man, John McKay, who says that the future of our club is Doug Williams. Billy Nelson next to him. He calls most of the offensive plays. On first and 10, Johnny Davis is into the lineup. He's the blocker we spoke of a moment ago. He beats Ricky Bell over the right side for a gain of a yard and a half. It'll be second down and eight. Jerry Buckensturm. Defensive left linebacker for the Bears, number 58, in on the stop. You know, as we've seen the start of this game, there's no question the Bears are an aroused football team. They're playing very hard, very aggressively, and you really see it on the defensive part of the field. They were slightly embarrassed a week ago by the Pittsburgh Steelers. They opened that game in good stead. They just could not get the points on the scoreboard. Then Bradshaw took over and ran them right out of the ballpark. The Bears lose it, 38-3. Higgins in motion. Williams on second down and eight. The screen goes to Johnny Davis. And Davis dragged down from behind, out close to the 40-yard line, a gain of three. It'll be third down and six. Fran, as you know, Williams doesn't use his wide receivers that much, and they're smallish. Frank noted that. Higgins is 5'9". Jones, who's a good athlete, is only six feet. Thus, Jimmy Giles, the tight end, becomes his prime target. Well, it's been a change and in his backs. It's been a change in their philosophy. A year ago, he was throwing the ball deep more, and he only completed 41% of his passes. This year, he's utilizing the backs more. It must be a strategy True. of John McKay and his offensive staff, and his completion percentage has gone up, and he's really played much better than he did a year ago. Third down and six. The ball just inside the 40-yard line of Tampa Bay. The motion man is Ricky Bell. Gary Davis gets the call. Inside handoff over the 40-yard line, short of the first down, out to the 42-yard line. Taken there by Doug Plank. 
And Mike Hartenstein and Tampa Bay will be forced to punt again. That's what you call an uncommonly conservative call. It was. Uh, I don't know again whether they, they are worried about the win that much. I wouldn't on third and seven in that situation, but uh, obviously they thought they'd get them in a pass rush situation. It is a good pass rushing defense and try to trap up the middle. It didn't work. Here's Von Lusby. You just saw a moment ago. Tom Blanchard will be punting for Tampa. A little over a 42 yard average thus far in this young season. The flag is down and hurrying the punt is Blanchard. Lusby has the ball at the 14 yard line. Another flag goes down as Lusby spins and twists his way out to the 23-yard line, 44-yard punt. Our referee tonight has been right. It was an excellent punt, low punt into the wind. A pair of flags, as I mentioned, down on the field. Ben Dry is going to work it out with his crew of assistants, and then we'll get the call. Gives them a first down, guys. That will be a first down for Tampa Bay. Fourth down and four, and Tampa Bay will have their first down out over the 45-yard line of the Chicago Bears. The Bears would like to have some of those faces playing linebacker for them. First down, Tampa Bay. Defense offside at the first down. And Chicago, one and three on this young season. As we look at John McKay, Tampa Bay, two and two. Detroit leading the central division of the NFC. They are four and one. Tampa Bay at their own 46-yard line. Moving out of the backfield in motion. And here comes Ricky Bell. Hands the corner, tries to turn the corner, and runs into Gary Fensick and Mike Hartenstein. Gary Fensick, like so many of these Bears, recovering from knee surgery, and he's back in the hitting form that has been his trademark for the last five years. Exactly the point, Frank. You mentioned Doug Plank, who was probably the best hitter that you'd ever want to find in a defensive back outside the likes of Donnie Shell. But in Fensick and Plank, they may have the best tandem of safeties in terms of hitting in the league. Unfortunately, they've had to do a lot of hitting. That's not what you like to have back there, but they are good. It was a gain of a half a yard. We'll call a second down at nine. Tampa Bay at their own 47. Here's Doug Williams to the outside again. And right from the downfield. You saw that strong arm. The completion deep downfield going to Gordon Jones. So Tampa Bay has moved across midfield into Bear territory, close to the 35-yard line. All right, the Bears have as good a pass rushing team as in football. Williams is doing the right thing. He's using his agility. He's getting outside of the rush. He's got a good, clean look down the field, and he throws a perfect strike to Gordon Jones. Takes a strong arm to throw that kind of ball on the run, and he has it. Tell you it takes a strong arm. He hung it on a line, off the wrong foot, still had the smoke on it. And Jerry Eckwood is upended. Gary Fensick, we just spoke about him. He can do it. Reading the play, moving up quickly from that strong safety position. He had knee surgery following the Eagles playoff game of last year. He also had surgery on an ankle because of a basketball injury. What he has is brains. He's an absolutely brilliant young man. Out of Yale. A good point to note about Fensick. He is their leading tackler coming into this game with 31 tackles in the first four weeks. The rookie Kevin House from Southern Illinois. Split to the right, out to the left is Gordon Jones. Loss of three, second down 13. The quick toss, Ricky Bell. Ricky Bell down the sidelines, and again, it was Fensick in on the stop, but a flag is down. Was it Gary Fensick who studied in your class at Yale, I believe, Howard? That's true. That's where he got his brains. I was going to <laughs> get to that. <laughs> Maybe a little more subtly. <laughs> Holding, you saw, indicated against Tampa. Big Charlie Hanna, that 73, up blocking in front of Ricky Bell that time. And he has really come along. His brother, of course, is Big John Hanna up in New England. Holding, offense, number 88. Jimmy Giles. Well, many times on a pitch to the outside like that, the tight end has got the toughest block. 
at that time, they caught Jimmy Giles trying to hold the strong side linebacker, Puckett Strum, Sturm of the, of the Bears. It'll be second down and 23. The ball now back near the Bears' 49-yard line. Bell, 42. Eckwood, 43. The setbacks for Tampa Bay. Williams puts them both in the pattern and the in and out of the hands of Gordon Jones, and that ball was lightning. Maybe third down, 23. Doug Williams came to the Bucks in 78 in a trade of draft picks with Houston. Of course, Houston picked Earl Campbell with Tampa Bay's draft pick that year, and well, the Bucks came away not only with Doug Williams, they got Jimmy Giles in that trade, they got a first and a second, they got a third and a fifth. They put together a football team on the strength of the draft pick that Houston used to draft Earl Campbell. Third and 23, Gary Davis in the lineup, number 28, good receiver. Williams dumps it off to Gary Davis. Flag is down, Davis bobbles the ball, and a bear has it, I think it's Vincent. Again, a flag is down. Fensick has been all over the field. He really has. Young game. And I think it's a holding call. Let's see. But is the Bears retained position? Holding offense. There is 72. Deploying a penalty. First down. Ray Snell holding on the play. Gary Fensick. Very alertly picked up the bobble ball by Gary Davis and the Bears had field position. They'll be at their own 41 when we come back. Panasonic calls this VHS recorder Omnivision. I call it Reggie. The Bucks are here and we are here and we're going to be all over the airwaves coming up at the baseball playoffs coming your way. College football on Saturday. We'll tell you more about it. The Bucks used up six minutes of the clock on 11 plays on that drive before Gary Davis gave it up. To Vincent. The Bears now with the first and ten. The ball at their own 41 yard line. Bash Nagel, number 84, wide receiver. Split to the right. We're looking at Mike Fitz, the quarterback. The motion man is Robin Earl. Play action by Fitz. Fires intended for Bash Nagel. Incomplete. And this is Jordan defensively there for Tampa. The moment Phipps had an incomplete, was, there was some booze. They're on him here constantly. They've been on Avellini in the past constantly. And they'll even get on Vince Evans, too, if he comes in. They've been waiting a long time for a winner here. They haven't had it since 63, even though they made the playoffs a couple of times in the recent years. So Phipps faces pressure, Frank. Coming into tonight, Phipps rated last in the top 14 quarterbacks in the first four games of this young season. He looks over a Tampa Bay defense on second down and 10. Inside handoff is Roland Harper, and Roland Harper is nailed there by Neil Colsey. Read the play beautifully, stepped into the line of scrimmage along with Cecil Johnson. Frank, what Neil Colsey did, it was a safety blitz. And a safety blitz is a, is a pretty good defensive strategy when you know they're going to run the football. He stepped into it more than he read the play to Neil Colsey, and here is Gary Fensick who turned the ball over to the Bears. I said, that's, ago. I said that's a brilliant young man, and so he is. He majored in finance and business at Yale and could have had a top spot in the business world. Wanted to prove to himself he could play in this league, and how he has. Bears from their own 38, third down, 14. Beautiful strike, complete out to the 45-yard line to James Scott, and a flag is down at the line of scrimmage. Usually where you get the holding call against the offense, and that's what we have. It's too bad. James oh, he Scott. threw a beautiful ball in there. Yes, he did. he did. James Scott is a man to watch. He came out of the World Football League, the late and unlamented one, and he joined the Jets during the brief era of Lou Holtz. Holtz didn't like him. Let's look for the call here. Holding offense number 70. He missed practices. He was late for practices. Holtz took as much as he could bear. But when the Bears got him, he started to come around and showed his real talent. As for Phipps on that throw, Frank, I think Jim Finks, the general manager of the Bears, fell in love with Phipps when he had a very good year with the Cleveland Browns and almost upset Miami in the playoffs in their unbeaten year. Right now, Phipps has his problems. I would say so. Looks out over a third down and 23. Fires 
the water. Peyton rebounds the football incomplete. Tampa Bay rushes to pick it up, does David Lewis, anticipating that it might be called a lateral. It is not. It'll be fourth down, and Bob Parsons will come on to punt. And you hear the bluebirds. There they are. Well, that's not a very gutsy call there. Phipps was not pressured. He had plenty of time to look down the field to find an open receiver. He released too fast out to Walter Payton. As great as Walter Payton is, it would have been hard for Walter Payton to run 25 yards for a first down with that pass. Here's Bob Parsons. He'll hang it high, and here's Danny Reese. He stationed himself at Tampa's 20-yard line. A little over an eight-yard average thus far this season for Danny Reese. Parsons puts it up in the lights. Reese lets it bounce. I don't know whether he lost it or not. Reese gets back to the 15, and a flag goes down. Probably a clip. 58-yard buck by Parsons. It appeared as though Danny Reese might have lost it. And the Bear is down at the 10-yard line. And Tampa Bay is going to have very poor field position. Otis Wilson, number one draft pick from Louisville for the Bears, is being treated there at the 10-yard line. A very important man in the Bears' future. No chipping. penalty. No penalty. Just thrown flag, I presume. But I like it. When you make a mistake, you correct it. And that is exactly what happened. Referee Ben Rice has no penalty. And when we come back, Tampa will have the ball at the 15. This is an all night. In Chicago, Frank Gifford along with Howard Cosell and Fran Tarkenton. No score in this young football game. 354 remaining in the first quarter. Tampa Bay and the Chicago Bears. The Bucks have the football at the 15-yard line who almost made it to the Super Bowl a year ago in the fourth year of their existence. Losing to the Rams in the NFC Championship game. Williams on first and ten. He has a man wide open. It's Higgins. Oh, and Higgins who did a little look in and go. And Terry Schmidt went for it all the way. And Williams over through Higgins. That young man would like to have that throw back. Ike Higgins ran a perfect pattern. He beat Schmidt, as you called, Frank. The ball was just overthrown. Well, what's interesting is he's beginning to throw to his wide receivers. He started hitting Jones successfully last week against Cleveland. And he's thrown to Jones three times tonight so far, and then to Hagans just now. And the Bears now have a five-man defensive front. Two tight ends. Now, Jimmy Giles, 88. Obradovich, 86. In for the buck, second down and 10. to go to the slap man. Coming across the middle was Gordon Jones, but Dan Hampton got a big hand on him. There's a story about Dan Hampton. Now, he was a first-round draft pick last year for the Bucks. I read it for the Bears, and they got that draft pick from Tampa Bay when they traded Wally Chambers to the Bucks a year ago. And their plan was to play Hampton inside with Harris from Arizona State outside. They switched that plan. Hampton... Because of injuries, they moved Hampton outside. He's been great. Now when they put Harris in, they get the kind of pass rush we saw early. We see Gary Davis once again for Tampa Bay on the passing situation. Third down and 10. The ball at Tampa Bay's 15. Williams under fire. Gets it off to Gary Davis. Short of the first down at the 22, and Tampa Bay must punt again. Defensively, the fifth man in that set backfield for the Bears with Winford Gaines on the stop. Howard, I am impressed with the Bear defense. They have come out tonight smoking this team that was really embarrassed a week ago against the Steelers. There is Vaughn Lesby deep for the Bears. Tom Blanchard to punt for Tampa Bay once again. Lesby anticipating the punt of Blanchard at his own 40-yard line for the Bears. Things go as they would like to see them go without good field position. Blanchard puts this up high. Lesby. He doesn't go with the fair catch in Tampa Bay. They have it. got it. I don't know. I don't know. Was a mad scramble? No. A bear got in there and ripped it out of the arms of a buck. Tampa Bay should have had it, Howard. Yep. It appeared he had it within his grip. He did. And he let it get away. Lesby, whom I mentioned a moment ago, returned to punts and kickoffs for Cincinnati. A year ago, did not go for the fair catch. And he was hit right there and hit solidly by Tony Davis. And the ball bounded around. 
That's the man, That's who, the man who should have had it. And the man who is all over the field for the Bears defensively was right there. And, of course, Doug Plank. He comes up with the fumble recovery, and the Bears have the football at the 45-yard line. That, of course, that lady is the mayor of Chicago, Jane Byrne. It's been a big day in Chicago. The president of the United States has been here. A lot of traffic, a lot of action all over town. I wonder if they smiled at each other. <laughs> they haven't been not all that friendly. Bears have the football, 44-yard line, first and 10. Hoop and uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneer. Dave Logan moves off sides. And we spoke the field position thus far in this young game. Chicago has had the ball in their own 44, the 41, and the 45. Tampa's had the ball at their own 20, the 20 once again in their own 15. But Tampa Bay, Coachman, he made contact. But Tampa Bay is much dominant in time of possession, as you see there. And also, Tampa Bay will lose the win in two minutes and 50 seconds. And as Graham has pointed out, it's quite a factor here in Soldier Field. Still no score if you just happen to have joined us. To Walter Payton. Payton spinning and twisting somehow, managing three yards out of what should have been nothing. Dewey Selman made the stop in. Howard, we've, well, we got to be proud of our engineers. They're going to be put to the test this week. They're going to be all over the country. Well, some of them are going to be with me in Philadelphia. Our congratulations to the Houston Astros. Somehow, the spirit of J. Rodney Richard prevailed, and the Astros won the one that counted. So, on Wednesday afternoon, we pick up with the American League playoffs. Tomorrow night, it's in Philadelphia. More on that in a minute. Second down and three for the Bears. This is Matt Suey, the rookie out of Penn State. Number two draft pick. Short of the first down by about a yard. It'll be third of the yard. Point I want to make on the playoffs, Keith Jackson, Don Drysdale, yours truly will be covering the National League, and what a treat for the viewers on the American League, because the announcing team will be Al Michaels, Jim Palmer of the Birds of Baltimore, how he knows the Royals and the Yankees, and then the manager of the year in anybody's book, the man who won three straight pennants for the Yankees, Billy Martin the field. Third down, a long one for the Bears. They move in a short yardage formation The two tight ends. Bob Fisher comes in there with Robin Earl. And off is to a suey. And a 5'11", 215-pounder close to the first down. I think he might have gotten it, but it's tough. The tough two yards. Matt Suey, who put up some pretty good marks at Penn State. Frank, as we look at uh, the measurement here, the one thing the Bears have had, as you pointed out, they've had field position. But this first quarter is winding down with 121 left. They have not threatened the Buck defense yet. And this field position will turn over in the second quarter. The Bucks will probably have good field position. There's the measurement. It's going to be very close. And Max Strangle, number 84 for the Bears, tells us We've got it. It's first and ten. If you look at Neil Armstrong, Neil Armstrong, now in his third year, came from Minnesota Vikings. Jim Finks, the former general manager, and your old boss up there, Fran, brought him in. Neil Armstrong's an excellent football coach, a defensive coordinator for the Vikings for years under Bud Grant. A lot like Bud Grant. Very calm. Armstrong took over at 78 from Jack Pardee at a 7-9 record in 78. Last year, 10-6. and six. Went to the playoff, they lost to the Eagles. First down and 10 to Bears. Play action by Fitz. Firing. Tender there for James Scott. James Scott was apparently running his own pattern. Mike Fitz made a bad decision there. He did not read the defense. If he'd have thrown the ball properly, the old coach would have intercepted. He's lucky he threw it over his head. Ricky Bell. Interesting there to watch Ricky Bell. He was taken ahead of Tony Dorsett in the draft in 77. And last year, after being counted around for a few years, he finally exceeded Dorsett by a couple of hundred yards. John McKay, of course, coached Ricky Bell at USC. Second down and 10. This is Walter Payton. That is a running football player, Walter Payton. He really is, Frank, but this year the Bear coaches say the offensive line, which has been a good offensive line for the Bears in years past, they have not played nearly as well this year as they have in the past. Payton, 
and six. Five, third, five, and third four. down and four. Peyton thus far this year at 65 yards against Green Bay. He exploded against New Orleans for 183. He had 39 against Minnesota, 60 last week against Pittsburgh. If they're smart, they'll throw a pass here. It's the last pass they'll get before they go against the win. They're down four. Final seconds ticking off here in the first quarter with no score. Here comes the safety blitz. Fitz reads it. He had Scott open, and he overthrows. And Fitz knows it better than anyone. Yep. He'll have a fourth down. Nobody said it'd be easy, Michael. To his credit, he has not had an opportunity really to work much with James Scott, who's been suffering from a hangstring pull. He missed one game. Nor has he had a chance to work with the second-year man, Ricky Watts, who's had a very sore ankle. He has also missed a game. We see Bob Parsons. He is a very good corner kicker. Let's see if he can get it inside the 20. Former quarterback and tight end, I might add, also Bob Parsons. He just hangs it high. Trying to get some of his own folks down there to kill it inside the five, but they do not. It's a touchback. The Tampa Bay will have possession. They'll have possession once again at their 20-yard line. And the first quarter has expired. So Tampa now will move with the win. The Bears against it. At Budget Rent-A-Car, you're number one. I'm sure. Here in Chicago, Tampa Bay has the football. Tampa Bay, now in their fifth year of existence in the National Football League, the Chicago Bears, their 61st year, and Papa Bear of all. George Hollis sitting nearby us here in the press box. The Bears struggle through that first quarter with the wind at their back. Williams hands off to Ricky Bell. Bell right down by Dan Hampton, the second-year man out of Arkansas. The stats of the first quarter, interesting to say the least. Yes, very. <laughs> One yard gained by Chicago with the wind at their back. Hardly prepossessing. In the meantime, Tampa Bay not doing much with its opportunities. And the interesting thing about Chicago is they had good field position throughout the quarter. Couldn't do a thing with it. Fimps throwing sidearm, sailed the ball. Did you ever see a sidearm pass who was good? I saw one great one, Y.A. Tittle. That's the, the, only, only the only accurate sidearm throw I've ever seen, and he was truly accurate. Second down and eight. Pick up two by Ricky Bell. Williams fires it out to Higgins, and he leaves it there incomplete. Tampa now going with their two tight ends. They've been doing this quite often. They bring in former roommate of... George Brett, Jim O'Bradovich, El Segundo High School. That's and George Brett was a running back. <laughs> but the only problem, he can't hit as well as Brett. I tell you, if we had Bradshaw quarterbacking one of these teams and Zorn the other, we'd have a football game. You, you've got really two quality teams out here. Both of these teams were co-favorites to win the Central Division title. Uh, Chicago's having big problems at quarterback. Williams has played pretty well this year, but tonight he hasn't uh, got him unlocked yet. And he's had a lot of things happen to him, like you saw in that play a moment ago. A lot of drop footballs. He had many of them against Dallas in a great show two weeks ago. On third down and eight. That ball deflected, and it was fortunate for Tampa Bay. It was not picked off. Intended for Jimmy Giles. Williams now 4 of 10, 31 yards. Tampa Bay will punt. Tampa Bay beat Cincinnati in their opener. They beat Los Angeles and they lost to Dallas and they lost to Cleveland. The Bears have also lost their last two. They've lost by 72 points. 34-14 to Minnesota, 38-3 to the Steelers. Von Lusby deep for the Bears. The Bears should again have good field position as Lusby stations himself at his own 35-yard line awaiting the kick to Tom Blanchard. City crowd here at Soldier Field. Not a high kick. Lesby feels it and then steps out of bounds at the 35-yard line. So the Bears again will have good field position. 43-yard punt by Tom Blanchard. And we'll be returning to Chicago in just a moment. Carnival time in Chicago for Monday Night Football. The Bears have the ball. First and 10 at their own 35-yard line. No score. Early moments of the second quarter. First and 10. Quarterback remains. Mike Pitts. Dave Williams, 22. Walter Payton, 34. The setbacks. This is Williams. Williams taken down. 
out from behind by Neil Posey, who made the start tonight. And Tampa Bay has really had their problems defensively because they've been shuffling folks around back there. Cedric Brown, their fine free safety, has been unable to play since the first week of the season. They tried Curtis Jordan at free safety. That weakened them all through their secondary. So now they brought in Neil Colsey to start tonight. If we talked about being impressed with the Bear defense, I'm also impressed with the Tampa Bay Buccaneer defense. They've only given up like two yards and a little over a quarter of play. Can't do much better than that. Second down and eight. Ricky Watts stood out to the right. He wears number 80 for the Bears. And Pitts dumps it off to Payton. And the electrifying run gets out over the 40. To the 42-yard line, it'll be third down and three. There's alumnus Gail Sayers, and what an alumnus he is. Created quite a stir in this town this week. They ran a big story. Sayers criticizes Peyton, says he should be catching more passes. The Bears coaching staff has a different view. They don't want Waller catching them in the middle. They feel they'll render him vulnerable to injury. Well, Howard, I disagree with Gail. I, I think they should throw the ball to Peyton, but he is their leading receiver. He's caught 14 balls in four games. you got to have somebody to get the ball to him. Third down, three. 42-yard line of the Bears. Fifth to put it up again. And that ball deflected by Bill Puller. Somebody had his arm in there. Frank, that's when you throw side on. The ball starts at a lower trajectory. When you actually look at Bill Collar there who made that uh, deflection. When you do throw side on him, you're right, Howard. You'll get more balls blocked, as Phipps did there. The Bears have been completely inept offensively. And Phipps has had some people open. You wonder if Vince Evans is going to get a quicker look than normal. Bob Parsons to punt. He's been kicking beautifully tonight and often. Danny Reese at the 10 yard line of the Bucks. We've had so many punts already. This will be the third for Parsons. And he puts it up beautifully. Reese again. No fair catch at the 20 yard line. He's piled up there immediately. Tampa Bay will have the ball once again at the 20-yard line. That's the fourth time thus far in this young game, which still is scoreless, that they have moved on their possession from their 20. Chicago, we have a game about as close as you can get it. Nothing to nothing. 12-53 remaining in the first half. Tampa Bay, first to 10 at their own 20-yard line. Between Kevin House and Terry Schmidt, the ball overthrown, and wisely so, because Terry Schmidt was with Kevin House all the way. If we get any scoring, guys, it's going to have to be a defensive touchdown, which brings the point yesterday, which is a wild day in the National Football League. There were 12 touchdowns scored by either the special teams or the defensive team. On all 12 of those touchdowns, they were made by the winning teams in every case. Not a losing team made one of those defensive or special teams play. That's John McKay and Bill Nelson with the headset. Bill Nelson, the former quarterback for the Cleveland Browns, calls the plays for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Isaac Higgins stood out to the right as Jimmy Giles, bottom of your screen, opens up from tight end. Second and ten. Ricky Bell. And Bell gets a move on one bear and gets close to a first down. He'll be short at the 30-yard line, however, by about a yard. Terry Schmidt defensively there for the Bears. Doug Williams passing over 52% coming into tonight's game. Six touchdowns, five interceptions. Set Tampa Bay records a week ago in a losing effort against Cleveland. 30 completions out of 56 attempts. Both of those are Tampa Bay marks. Three touchdowns and 343 yards. So he was very busy last week against Cleveland. Third down about a yard. you got to get him the ball right after you come off the fake. Doug Williams waited too long, and he ran out of field. Here it is. Right there, he should be throwing the football. He waited too late. Watch his man run out of field. Jones had to catch the ball going out of bounds. And fourth down will bring on Tom Blanchard, who's exhausting his right leg. Von Lusby settles in at the 25-yard line for the Bears. Yesterday, we had four block kicks for a touchdown. Off 
the side of foot of Blanchard, taken there by Lusby on the dead run. And Lusby puts the Bears again in good field position at the 41-yard line. It's the seventh punt, or rather the eighth punt, thus far of this young ball game tonight. We'll be back. Soldier Field in Chicago right after this message. On the sidelines, head coach John McKay talking it over with his young quarterback, Doug Williams. And out of the field, the Bears once again have that good field position. They've been unable to generate any offense to go with the field position they've had thus far throughout the evening. They have the ball just over the 41-yard line. Both their wide receivers spin out to the right. 84, James Scott, 89, top of your screen. Robin Earl, 81, is the tight end. Inside handoff, Peyton, and he's dead at the 40-yard line. Hustling Tampa Bay defense that has been their trademark over the years. That was Leroy Selman, who has not had really the great year that he did last year, but not much of it has had to do with the fact that he gets a lot of attention whenever they run his direction. But he's still leading this team in tackles. Going into this game, he'd made 28 tackles in the four games. We are advised that Lusby, who went out earlier, suffered a twisted left knee. Lusby, of course, see him again remains to be determined. Lusby, of course, to return man for the Bears. Second down and 11. There was a loss of one. That play by Leroy Selman. Fitz, tight end, open over the middle, and this is Bob Fisher. Fisher takes the ball inside the 40-yard line. The rookie from SMU was... Such a surprise for the Bears this year as a 12-round draft pick. Yes, that's the point. He All was right. a 12th-round draft choice. They didn't know they were getting. So find a young player. They're frank to admit it. All right, we've said Phipps has thrown some bad balls. That was a very fine pass and a good reception by that man, Robert Fisher. That troubles. They had to put Mike Cobb at tight end on the injured reserve tonight. He's in the hospital with pneumonia. Greg Lotta has a broken hand. He broke that in preseason play, so he is unavailable. So you just saw the rookie Bob Fisher from SMU give the Bears a first down. This is Walter Payton. And Payton runs into a crowd of bucks. What a fellow named Lewis. Yards. Yes, David Lewis. David Lewis. Big, strong, fast, everything you want for a strong outside linebacker, particularly on that left side, where most teams run right at him. He's 6'4", 245-pounder, and like so many of these bucks, played for John McKay. Played for John in his last year at USC, 75. McKay makes the point that he can play the 34 defense with Lewis because, in effect, it's a 43 when you got Lewis and he can make it that instant. Second down and nine. Three wide receivers for the Bears. Scott, Watts, Boschnagel. Complete out to Dave Williams. It'll be third down, long yardage. That's what you call hearing the footsteps. Yep. Dave Williams should have caught the ball. Well thrown ball by Pitt. Williams dropped it again. Williams playing, I might add, with a very sore hip point in the night. You know, Giff, they started rolling Harper, but they're really not playing him very much. Williams has played most of the game. Matt Suey's come in some. You wonder if Harper's really right yet. No, Frank said at the beginning he'd likely be tentative. Third down and nine. Scott, the speedy one, goes far out to the right for the Bears. Josh Angle split out to the left. The big tight end, Bob Fisher, opens up, bottom of your screen. Pence, they're in a heap of trouble. Somehow he gets it off to Walter Payton. And Payton struggles and finally goes down in the arms of Curtis Jordan, short of the first down, and now the Bears will have to punt. I tell you, as you take another look, and it was a dangerous effort, but a splendid one. Great effort by Phipps. David Lewis has got him, gets it off to Peyton. Now watch the play by 25, Curtis Jordan. He really makes some play to keep Peyton from making the first down. Hey, right now, the Bears are a little undecided as to what to do, so Brian Boschnagel calls timeout. Out of the field is fourth down and four, and the Bears have called timeout. They appeared as though they were going to go for a fourth and four with the ball at the 33-yard line, the 34-yard line of Tampa Bay. Now there's a hesitation. The timeout has been called. Here's Phipps with Armstrong. Mike Phipps comes back out on the field. Keep in mind, it's fourth down and four. 
The Bears apparently going to go for it. And also keep in mind they could be trying to draw Tampa Bay offsides. Five-yard offside penalty would give them the first down. And they'll probably have to throw it if they're going to have any chance of getting it. first down at the 21 yard line all right he looked really open and phipps completed that ball under a lot of pressure he's thrown three or four straight good passes here he goes there's a blitz on you'll see the linebacker come into his face he hangs in there gets the ball out to scott on time scott had his man beaten easily mike washington the cornerback who in a blitz situation as all cornerbacks no, he will be man for man. And he laid a little off. And Scott made the square out move. Got the Bear first down. Bears deepest penetration. Fifth down, 5 of 11, 44 yards. Walter Payton. Squeezes out a couple, get maybe three. It'll be second down at seven. And we're going to pause five seconds right now and allow our local stations around the country to tell you who's bringing you the football game. WLS TV, Chicago. and the clock is moving remaining in the first half from Soldier Field in Chicago Frank Gifford along with Howard Cosell and Fran Tarkenton seesaw battle between the 20 yard lines of both of these teams the Bears now with their deepest penetration they have a second down and seven no score of course ball at the 17 yard line big toss this is Williams Dave Williams Williams turns the corner and taken down from behind. Short of a first down. Out there quickly was Leroy Selman after he spun off the block. You had to figure that after the Bears on six possessions and had excellent field position, sooner or later, even with all their offensive frailties, they would have a scoring opportunity. It's finally come about. Bob Thomas. Field goal kicker for the Bears, loosening his leg in anticipation that he may be needed. Now get the field, third down, a long yard for the Bears. In this situation, you've got to figure you've got two downs to make. Another timeout. This is unforgivable. You don't use up your timeouts to know the game. Well, I think the Bears up. have now used up two timeouts. They only have one left. This is not what you expect in professional football. So Phipps will move over and visit with Neil Armstrong, Armstrong, and we'll have a chance to tell you about college football coming your way on this big week of sports here at ABC. Be sure to join us Saturday as it'll be Oklahoma and undefeated Texas going against one another, one of college football's richest traditions, and of course the, from the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas. Then beat Longhorns are led by a flashy running back, A.J. Jan Jones, who has rushed for over 100 yards in each game this far in 1980. He's also tied for the nation's lead in scoring. They'll face the Oklahoma Sooners, whose explosive attack ran up, would you believe this, 82 points against Colorado and Boulder on Saturday. So that's Oklahoma and Texas Saturday. College football, 1230 Eastern time right here on the station of Sports ABC. We're going to be busy testing even the unbelievable medal of the technicians that have brought to you so many spectacular events over the years. John McKay looking out at his defensive unit. 7-12 remaining in the half. There is no score. And the Bears have a third. And we'll call it a long yard for the first. Good yardage offense. That means the two big tight ends are in. Peyton and Williams are the setbacks. Walter Payton. What an off A couple of Tampa Bay Bucks and gets the first down. Well, now that will depend on where they mark it. If he made it, which I think he did, it was all Walter Payton. He was hit before he got to the line of scrimmage, but through sheer effort. I'll tell you, they marked it further back than I thought they would. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure he made it. All right, if he doesn't, it'll be an interesting decision that Armstrong's got to make here. Does he take the three or does he go for it? Let's see if he no, has to make Fips that decision. Oh, no, no. Phipps takes a timeout, comes over to find <laughs> out. <laughs> How easy. Peyton, who had made contact, obviously a knee touched the ground, and they marked it back. All right, they're going for 
Howard Giff, and they're putting their big block and fullback Harper into the game. And you know who's going to get the ball. The world knows who's going to get the ball. It's going to be 34, sweetness, Walter Payton. Here's the play, as brought in by Roland Harper. They've got to be coming left. But Fitz knew he was going to carry it. First down, Chicago. Inside the 10-yard line. It'll be first and goal. Good call by Neil Armstrong to, to go for it. That was a good decision. Even if he hadn't made it, it was a good decision. Mike Fitz, who joined these Bears in 77 from the Cleveland Browns, as Howard mentioned earlier. It is the toughest place to have the ball, the nine and the three-quarters yard line to get in. I always thought in this situation you're better to, to to pass the ball three times. 56 yards they've been. Bears come firing out of the huddle. Walter Payton. Well, they say uh, a swarming <laughs> gang tackling <laughs> Buster Bucks headed by Richard Wood. They stop Walter Payton for a loss. Now you put yourself in a very difficult offensive position. There, yes, indeed, to put it mildly. There's not much room down there to throw the ball anyway, and now with uh, second and 12, you, you've got to throw. The defense knows you've got to throw. It's tough. Tampa Bay has traditionally defense Peyton better than any other team in the league. Yep. Now the thing the Bears don't want to do here is turn the ball over. Get your sure three. You can get a touchdown, fine, but don't lose the ball. Loss of two, second and goal at the 12. Fitz. Incomplete. That's the side on again. That's why you'll see so many of his passes batted down. That's the size of David Lewis. He put that big arm up. He's six foot four. Great players make great plays. David Lewis, you saw, just made one there. It'll be third down and 12. Robin Earl brings the play in. They'll have to bring it in quickly. The Bears have already expended two of their three timeouts. Well, if he's going to score, he's got to throw it to the end zone. There ain't no first down to be made. Here comes the blitz. My goodness. And Peyton, who wanted to reverse the ball, I do believe. Well, I had to keep it because Ricky Watts was caught in the middle of that blitz and he could not give it to Watts. How can you prove on that. The play was sent in. You got to boo uh, Bill Nelson. There's no booing. That was a great defensive call at just the right time. They got their safety blitz right in the middle of a reverse. Yes, but on third and long, you yeah, don't have you an outside can... pass rush, Skiff. That's the hardest time to make a reverse work. Fourth down, Obviously, and the... here is Bob Thomas. They're lucky they didn't fall out of field goal position. Walter Payton made a great play by not trying to hand the ball off. 30-yard attempt. Thomas, who is five out of six for the year, is now six out of seven for the year, and the Bears are on the scoreboard. Bears leading the Bucks three to nothing with 4:37 remaining in the first half. One goose egg is erased. More than seven minutes on a 13-play drive before settling for three points. They lead the Tampa Bay Buccaneers three to nothing. Set to kick off Bob Thomas. Deep for Tampa Bay is Gary Davis. Thomas, not a long kicker. Gary Davis will take it at the 10. Gary Davis around the corner. And Gary Davis brings Tampa Bay out close to their own 45-yard line before Robert Fisher made the stop. I respect this player, Gary Davis. He's from Cal Poly in Louis Obispo in California. He was one of those Bobby Bethard lower round draft choice specials with Miami. He appeared on the verge of becoming one of the stick-out running backs in the league, and he can catch the ball, too. For some reason, Shula soured on him and unloaded him. Gary Davis came with Norris Thomas, a cornerback from Miami just before the season started. This is Eckwood. Well, Gary this is, Eckwood picks up a couple. It'll be second and eight. This is far and away the finest field position, the only good field position that Tampa Bay has That's had. Right. See if they can do anything with it. They put up a nice fence for Davis, and he used it well. Yes, he did. There's Walter. Must be frustrating for such a great running back. Look at.
at that. Peyton, nine rushes, 11 yards. That's not sweetness. That, well, he's doing everything he can do, but he's got to have a little bit of help to do any better. Kevin House, the rookie, number 89 from Southern Illinois, comes up for Tampa Bay on the second down at eight. And off Eckwood, and Eckwood finds an opening. Eckwood has a first down at the Bears' 45-yard line before taken there by Gary Fencing. Now Williams has 3.30 to go. Let's see how he uses the clock, and let's see if he can drive them down and in. Well, there's a fine athlete, Eckwood. Not only is he a gifted runner, as you see right there, but he set a club record catching 10 of Doug Williams' passes a week ago against Cleveland. First Tampa Bay first down of this quarter, and we have 3.13 remaining. All just inside the Bears' 45-yard line. Williams with play action. Has the time, and he fires, and again is dropped by Gordon Jones. Well, I'll tell you, Williams did a superb job there. He waited for Gordon Jones to uncover. He delivered a perfect ball, but the quarterbacks need ends to catch it. They can't do both. So Gordon Jones just dropped it. I'll tell you, this has been happening to Doug Williams, not only all the first four games they've been played, but also over last year. And people are saying he throws it too hard. I don't believe he can throw the ball too hard. That ball was catchable. The rest professional ends supposed to catch the ball soft or hard. Well, he got his worst breaks in the Dallas game. Second down and 10. Bottom of your screen, that's Timmy Giles. Under pressure, and Williams tries to dump it off to Eckwood. The blitz was on. Otis Wilson, the rookie from Louisville, number one draft pick. And Doug saying the Bears in there pressuring Williams. <laughs> Doug saying, Coach, it's hard to throw from the seat of your pass. Watch it here. I have never seen a quarterback throw from the seat of his pass. This is not Williams' fault. He's back in the pocket trying to throw. You see the pressure. The pocket is just caving in. He tries to get the ball out, release it sooner than he'd like to, and then he hits the ground. Alan Page made the pressure. Otis William Wilson. Bears at 55 to Doug Buffon. War for 14 years for the Bears. They both hail from Louisville. Third and 10. Higgins in motion. Williams, got a man. And Jones gets the rebound and holds on inside the 25-yard line. Well, this time, Gordon Jones took quite a lick. He came up with the football and held on for a Bear first down at the 23. And watch this here. Terry Schmidt, 44, makes a great play. He's beaten by Gordon Jones. He jumps out in front, tips the ball up, but Gordon Jones, with good concentration, made up for his drop. He caught it, and then he got hit by Mr. Plank. That was concentration because Plank really pounded Gordon Jones, and yet he held on to the football. Plank shaking up, but he's up on his feet once again. First and 10, 22-yard line, they mark it at the Bears. Giles, his first reception of the night. Giles down at the 12-yard line, a gain of four. And this is Daryl Stingley visiting here tonight. Of course, Chicago, Daryl Stingley's hometown. We saw him a couple of weeks ago when he was up in New England for the New England Olympic game. Good to see you, Daryl. Glad to see you getting around. We'll be back with more football, but right now we have a message from the National Football League. Stay with us. I of a coach. <laughs> uh, Neil Armstrong. Is this Neil Armstrong, Armstrong the to the moon. Well, what can I tell you? He was also 10-6 and six and got in the playoffs a year ago. This drive started for Tampa Bay at their own 44-yard line. This will be the seventh play, and Doug Williams will bring the Bucks up with the second down and six. It's a good-looking drive they've got going here. Eckwood, and Eckwood gets inside the 15, down around the 13-yard line, short of the first down. It'll be third down on long one. Williams in the same situation Phipps in. They want the touchdown, but you don't want to give it up on a turnover here as this first half is closing down. You want the three, sure three, if you can, touchdown is fine. Seconds ticking away. Tampa Bay, however, has three timeouts. Inside, a minute and a half remaining in the first half. Rick 
Mikey Bell, the left side. Struggles and surges forward, close to a first down. Again, it will be where the officials determine his momentum carried it. Stops with 115 as Garo Yaprimian runs up on the sidelines. The milliner. Well, McKay may have the same decision that Armstrong did. If it's short, does he go for the first down like Armstrong did, or does he kick the field goal? It's short. It's short by inches. It's the exact same decision. Interesting, isn't it? It is. The Bears went for it. Let's see what they do. Minute 15 to go. All right, Bill Nelson's calling the play there. He sends it in. Bill Nelson sends the play in. Gordon Jones bringing the ball in. All right, Bill's quarterback secret. you got a big quarterback here. Will he do the same thing? I will not be surprised to see Williams keeping himself and sneaking. 103. That is moving. And I don't know. Williams tried to go for it. Again, he only had to make inches. They have lost the ball. Mm. Yeah, but I think his initial progress got the first down. Let's see if they give it to him. Williams is complaining they're not marking it where his progress was. They'll have another measurement. I think it's the toughest decision a referee has to try to figure out where to mark that football. Tampa. <laughs> 59 seconds left. And again, the three timeouts still in hand for Tampa Bay. And Tampa Bay will use one of those timeouts. You saw John McKay indicate to Doug Williams, let's use one of them, talk it over, get ourselves pulled together. And that's exactly what's going to happen. of injuries yesterday. It's our duty to report them. Washington, Terry Hermeling, a concussion, questionable for next week. The Giants, Alvin Garrett, Bruce Dip, questionable. Oh, and uh, as we turn to the graphic, Isaac Curtis, strained back. Pittsburgh, Lynn Swan, cracked rib. Oakland, a terrible thing. Pastorini, broken leg, and also cartilage damage in the knee. New Orleans, Manning, a muscle bone. Buffalo, Nixon, the fine defensive back, knee injury, Cush, knee injury, Jets, Gaines, broken leg, that's terrible. Strained shoulder for Ryan, the backup quarterback. Sounds like a critique of MASH. Well, they come in bunches, don't they? It's the first week we really had that big an injury report. With two broken legs, that's too bad. Doug Williams has been fortified with the knowledge from the bench. He moves out onto the field. again at the 12 yard line 54 seconds remaining here in the first half the Bucks down by three and if you're going to throw the, you're going to throw the first down the time to throw here going for Giles touchdown but a flag is down Jimmy Giles coming off the line of scrimmage both wide receivers have been placed to the left well, he made a good drive into the end zone. But it was a smart call. The whole defender gets the bucks, but how is a smart call? Because first down the best time to throw the ball in that part of the field. And second down, too. <laughs> the first down is special. That's too bad for the Bucks. Good break for the Bears. Holding offense number 50. At the center, Steve Wilson, who, by the way, is playing with a broken finger on his left hand. And it obviously would be causing him trouble and he is detected holding first and 20 49 seconds remain ball at the 22 yard line what he's got to throw now Williams has to get rid of it early tries to go to Ricky Bell incomplete Gary Buckett's turn. This game is not an advertisement Bell. for the National Football League. But I want to talk about 82, Alan Payne. Oh, he was there, wasn't he? pressured him again, and he's playing just as good a football as he's ever played in his life, and that's about as good as any defensive tackle can play. You know, he started his 188th consecutive game tonight. Amazing football player. Anyway, he's he really 200 and what, 28? 228 right now. He came into the league really about 270. He's a marathon runner now, but he's some kind of football player. Second and 20. Ricky Bell now 
single setback for Tampa. Williams intended for Giles, incomplete defensively back there. Tom Hicks, the middle linebacker, number 54 for the Bears. And another holding call, again indicated against Tampa Bay. Well, if it's against Tampa Bay, you're premium. They got to accept the holding call, although it'd make it third down and 20 or so without it. I think they got to accept it, push them back. They now, your premium may be close to out of his range. Well, the thing he's got going for him, keep in mind, he's got a good, strong win behind him. Holding offense number 61. I told him to give up the tie business and go into the hat business. Greg Roberts, the right guard for Tampa Bay, holding this time. But if they don't do any better than where they are right now, he would have to kick the ball 49 yards. And even with the trailing win, that's tough for you, Quinn. Ball now at the 32-yard line. 39 seconds on the clock. What's important now is not so much the touchdown, but to get the ball 10 to 12 yards down the field to give the Premier a better shot at it. Down, of course, remain the same. Second and 30. for Isaac Hagans. No, he was out of bounds. And Williams again holding on to the last possible moment before releasing it. He gets pounded. He is taking a pounding and that's going to tell on him too. As big as he is and as strong as he is. Here goes Doug back in the pocket. He's trying to hit Hagans down the field. The deep pattern takes a lot of pass protection which they don't get. Big Hampton comes in and gently puts him to the ground. 33 seconds now, third down, 30. We'd like to see him throw an intermediate pass, a 10 to 12 yard pass is really what he needs to do. Kevin House, the rookie from Southern Illinois, in there for Tampa Bay. Incomplete. And he's hit it for Jimmy Giles, and Bruce Heron was back there defensively, and Doug Williams is claiming he should see a flag. Doug Williams is wrong. He should have. He should have intercepted the ball. He dropped the. He dropped the pass. Doug Williams complaining. He should have had pass interference. Here we are from the end zone. Williams goes back. Got pretty good protection this time. He's going down the middle to his tight end Giles. Watch Heron there. Come to the screen. He had a chance at the interception. There was no interference there at all. That's Doug Plank, 46. That could have been as though he's around. That could have been what Doug Williams was complaining about. I laid hit by was. Plank against Jimmy Giles, who, of course, very close friend. And Doug Williams, number one receiver. Now, I've got a great You'll remember they got a break on a controversial interference call against Los Angeles, and that's the way they beat the Rams. But, but you Plank, don't get those every game. Oh, no, Doug Plank did not make a bad play. He had to, he had to hit him. He didn't know whether he caught it or not. There wasn't the the referees were absolutely right. And now we got your premium with the wind at his back, 49 yards. Tampa Bay down down to one timeout. Gary Yepremian, he's setting up what appears to be a 49-yard field goal attempt. I don't know whether Garrow still has that in that leg. Has been kicking for some 13 years. But he's out there looking confident. Well, against the Rams on our Thursday night game, he made one from, what, 40? He made one from 45 or so without a win in his back. 43 out against the Rams. Hit the crossbar, I might add. Yep. So Kyle's being one, administered to there. This win is worth six yards to him, so he's, he's got enough leg to make it. Area Premier. 12 of 16 last year in New Orleans. Had been nine years in Miami. He was three years in Detroit. And now in the uniform of Tampa Bay. All right, here's the play. You see Heron make almost the interception. Here's Plank. And he spares him. I think that maybe Williams had a legitimate complaint. It was late, it was scary. All the things that we're not doing anymore in pro football. Block. Larry Apremian, of course, he would have to have a very low trajectory to make a 49-yard field goal and the Bears block it. Flag on the field. Flag is down. They believe that flag was thrown after the ball was blocked and was bounding around. 
It'll be an interesting call right here. Unsportsmanlike, number one, kicking the ball deliberately. Kicking the ball. Barry Apremian <laughs> got a double hit. <laughs> well, what? Let's, let's watch the penalty here. The ball's already been blocked, and your premium kicks it again. And that's a no-no. You cannot do that, Garrow. Well, at least he didn't try to pass it. <laughs> He's forgotten his Super Bowl antics. Well, what this will probably do is give the Bears a chance to get that's its right. goal position. But the fact that they used their two timeouts gives them just one yes. remaining. They mark it off. Sportsman like call against Gary Yepremian. Now Thomas has better range than Yepremian. If Phipps can pull off a 20 yard gain here, 18 yard gain, they've got a shot for a field goal. The penalty puts the ball at the Bears 47 yard line. 20 seconds remaining. The Bears have one timeout. They give them three to nothing. What was this? They said they declined the penalty. So I guess if they had accepted the penalty, they'd have had a chance to kick over. But that doesn't seem right. That's good. You would think that they'd be able to add the penalty since it happened after the play that add the penalty right to this position of the field. The referees, I'm sure, know better than we do up here. Ricky Watts split out to the right, top of your screen. Speedy Youngster from Tulsa, James Scott, split to the left. Fitz got it. Scott. Scott kills the clock. Now that's it. They got, got the 34 yard line. That was a smart play by James Scott. We got a stuff on the sideline. Mike Washington took a shot at James Scott. Did they throw a flag? If it is, that's a good critical penalty. Tippers flaring here. There's no flag. Inside the 33. Right, here comes again. Scott. He does a smart thing. Gets the ball. Comes out of bounds. Let's watch it. Let's watch this. I still don't see it. Comes very late. There is Washington, number 40. Shove Scott. Well, one more completion in there in field goal territory. They got one timeout left. 12 seconds. It's lost its head. It is not showing any kind of leadership. All that penalty did was get the field goal. Field goal and they weren't where they were. All right, here comes Sweetness. Cecil Johnson, 56. He threw him down way out of bounds. Good call. Number 54 on the defense. First down. I believe they had that number wrong. It was number 56. If you're right again. Ball inside the 16-yard line. And remember where we were a few seconds ago on the clock? Tampa Bay. Well, this is an interesting Going play. Score. Se seven seconds left. They better do it quick so they have a chance to kick a field goal. She's going to throw to the end zone, I would think. And Mike Pitts throws it away. Three seconds on the clock. And we will see the field goal team coming out for Chicago. Bob, uh, Bob Thomas. There he is. That, my friends, was a good, smart throw by Pitts. He didn't have him open. He got rid of it quickly. You take a chance. Had he been wide open, Fifth would have tried to get it in for six. When he saw that it would be even close, he did not try to force it. Stop the clock for three seconds. Thomas has already hit from 30 yards out. This attempt from 32. No. Uh, time has expired here in the first half. And not one of the 
crisply played games you'll ever watch the Bears leave the field with the three to nothing lead over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Bob Thomas missing from 32 yards out. Stay tuned for halftime activities. On those. Back at Soldier Field, Chicago, live the halftime score in a very dull and sloppily played game. Chicago 3, Tampa Bay nothing. Now we're going to go to our new procedure wherein we show you in differing categories the key plays that occurred on NFL Gridirons yesterday. Plays selected by our producer and director, Bob Goodrich and Chet Forty. Our halftime features are being brought to you by Merrill Lynch. Imagination, instinct, and versatility make Merrill Lynch a breed apart. For the best passing performance of the day, it was Vince Ferragamo quarterback, L.A. Rams. This year he's completed 70 of 98 passes, eight touchdowns here with two of the four he scored yesterday. That went to Cullen Bryant. 20 yards and a TD. He didn't stop there. The Rams built up a 20 to 7 lead. And then Ferragamo went to further work. A fake to Elvis Peacock and then the toss to Willie Millen, number 82. A great day for Vince Ferragamo. For the best rushing performance of the day, who else but Franco Harris, number 32, Pittsburgh Steel is his first 100-yard game of the season, 102 yards on 22 carries. This was a dash for 15 yards as he broke loose on the left side, just part of a most productive day. On this play, you will see Franco burst off Matt Blair, number 59, for a touchdown. He's now tied with Leroy Kelly on the all-time NFL list, 74 rushing touchdowns. Detroit at Atlanta for the most unusual play of the day. The Falcons were leading 7-3 in the first quarter, and Buddy Curry, the rookie from North Carolina, came through. Danielson lost the ball. Nobody knew where it was except for Buddy Curry, and there went number 50 all the way downfield, 30 yards touch for the defensive performance. Who else but number 53, Randy Gratishaw, the great one from Ohio State with the Denver Broncos. 48 seconds left in the first half. Cleveland ahead, 10 to 6. Sipe rolling left, looking to pass. Throws, unfortunately for him, Gratishaw bats it down, 57. Tommy Jackson knocks it up into Gratishaw's hands. And Randy goes 93 yards for the touchdown, and never before had Denver had a, an interception return that long. The defensive performance of the day, Randy Gratishaw of the Denver Broncos, who went on to a key victory to keep their hopes alive in the AFC West, beating Cleveland 19 to 16. Bart Starr, a Lombardi disciple. Forrest Gregg, a Lombardi disciple. Cincinnati at Green Bay, Lambeau Field. First quarter, Cincinnati leading 6 to nothing. But Lynn Dickey, who wanted to retire two weeks ago, hit James Lofton for a touchdown, and the pack was back 7-6 to six leading. Then in the second quarter, the same Lynn Dickey having his best day of the year by far to Steve Atkins, the fine one from Maryland. Atkins poured in. Green Bay held on to win 14-9. Chuck Knox, the astonishing coach of the Buffalo Bills. The Bills at San Diego, the battle of unbeatens. The Bills down by 12 in the fourth quarter. And here, Rick Partridge, 17, couldn't get off the punt. Down by Rod Cush, the first-year safety. And so, Joe Ferguson was equipped to go to work just four plays later. Fourth and three at the Chargers, 90 hit. Mark Bramett, touchdown. It was 24-19 San Diego. On the Chargers, next play from scrimmage. First and 10, their own 21. Fouts, play-action pass, intended for Johnny Jefferson. But watch. 55, Jim Hazlitt picks it off. And he comes downfield 17 yards before being brought down by number 80, the tight end, Winslow. Kellen with the tackle. The turnover set up the winning touchdown. Here, second and goal, the Chargers three. Ferguson, the Cribs. Joe Cribs, the brilliant rookie from Auburn, in for the score. And so Buffalo had pulled another miracle. 
26 to 24. The Bills, the only unbeaten team in the NFL. Live at Soldier Field, Chicago, the Bears, halftime leaders, three to nothing over the Buccaneers. In the meantime, as I guess everybody in America knows, this afternoon at Dodger Stadium, the Houston Astros won their first Western Division pennant ever. They beat the Los Angeles Dodgers by a score of 7-1. to one. Our congratulations to them. Let's look at today's highlights. They played 162 games, each team did. It came down to one game this afternoon. Dave Goltz on the mound for the Dodgers. Top of the first, Terry Poole batting for Houston. Poole hit a simple ground ball to Lopes, who let the ball play, and Poole was on first, moved to third on a Cabell single, and then Cruz hit this simple grounder to Hatch, who he threw home. Apparently an easy out. Ferguson blew the play, two errors, one run in. They scored another run in the inning, two to nothing, Houston. Then, in the top of the third, two outs. Cesar Cedeno up, singled up the middle. That brought up the young man who's been the Astros' hottest hitter down the stretch run. Odd how the name. Didn't even break into baseball till he was 25. How? Got a hanging slider. Pummeled it to left center. Forget it, it was gone. Four to nothing, Houston. And it appeared there would be even more in that top of the fourth, but it turned out that there wouldn't be. Watch closely. Alan Ashby was on first. Greg Reynolds up. Hit that shot to right center. Watch Rick Monday. A remarkable pickoff of the ball and an equally remarkable relay to Lopes. Lopes a perfect throw home. And, of course, the runner was easily out. But look at Ferguson needlessly kneeing the runner. And that provoked tempers, and that provoked a near free-for-all. But the umpires prevailed. This was Terry Poole again. It was in the top of the fourth. The perfect bunt was a base hit. He stole second, got to third. Cabell and Morgan walked. Jose Cruz at the plate. Bases filled. Dodgers in deep trouble. And a long blast to left center. It appeared to be in the gap, but not with Rick Monday. He played sensationally all day in center field. Made that catch. That made it five to nothing. And more would be heard from Mr. Howe. Up again with the bases clogged. Broken bat single up the middle. And that made it seven to nothing. From then on, it was an absolute cakewalk for the Houston Astros. Joey Negro, the brother of the more famous Phil, had himself a ball. Frustration registered in the Dodgers' faces after their great comeback, but Houston had won. I think it's a big risk to have Reagan as president. Uh, Ray Reagan scares me. Surprise registered against the Houston Oilers yesterday by the Seattle Seahawks. And as we pick up the action, it was in the second quarter, 13 to nothing, Seattle, Houston's ball, first and 10, their own 19. Stabler throwing long for number 86, Mike Barber, but no, the ball was picked off by number 22, Dave Brown, out of Michigan, once a Pittsburgh, first round draft choice. Brought all the way back till he was felled by Earl Campbell. After that, three plays later, Seattle's ball, Jim's on back, looking downfield, hitting one of Fran Tarkenton's former receivers. Sam McCullough. So Seattle went on to pour it on Houston 26 to 7. Really a big upset that was. And there is Mike Phipps. We're back live getting ready for the second half. Getting his tonsils in order. Struggling to achieve some degree of posture. And a now sinking seat is Frank Gifford. <laughs> Am I doing all of that over here? <laughs> all right, Tampa Bay will kick off. Dropping deep is Dave Williams. He moves back for the Chicago Bears. As you look at the stats, the Bears had prime field position throughout the first half. They were only able to negotiate three points. Williams waits for the ball at the three. And here comes Dave Williams. Dave Williams makes the corner. And with an empty cutback, it's out over to the 40-yard line. And the Bears once again will have good field position. A pickup of 36 yards as we anticipate the return of Mike Phipps along with Dave Williams. Set back and Walter Payton, wide receivers. We saw Brian Bashnagel, number 84, Ricky Watts, number 80, and James Scott, number 89. They were all remaining. Our tight end has been mostly Robin Earl, defensively. Both of them. Fuller, Leroy Salmon. That's the front three for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The linebackers are Johnson, Wood, Dewey Salmon, and David Lewis. We'll set the secondary in a moment. Roland Harper now stays in rather than Dave Williams. Harper opened this game. A year's absence. And Harper. It is Harper getting, getting the call, and Harper finds an opening in, picks up five.
five yards into second and five. Jeff, I cannot tell you what a big return Dave Williams gave the Chicago Bears. They're going into this strong win tonight. He established field position for him right off the bat in the third quarter by returning the kickoff back to the 40-yard line. And once again, they had good field position in the first half. The Bears had six possessions, all of them from the 36 or better. As I said, they got only three points. Tampa also had six possessions. The best they had was from their own 44, and they had a field goal block after a drive that failed. Second and five. Walter Payton. Payton just on good strength. Gets inside. Buck territory. It'll be a bear first down. Frank Gifford along with Howard Kilsall and Brian Tarkin in Bearsville. And if you look down and see these bears, it's fun to recall the many great players that have performed in this block, the traditional block of the bears. We talked with one today, Howard Sid Luckman. Sid, of course, recalling some of the great years. Bears hoping that the 10 6 record of a year ago is an indicator of things to come. They've been struggling here in the first part of the season. 1 and 3 coming into tonight. Tampa Bay 2 and 2. On first and 10, fifth to the air. The ball dropped by Robin Earl. Took his eyes off it. It'll be second and 10. Once again, in their tight end, he was a running back in his previous three years. That's one of the most common things you'll see. Tight ends and fullbacks interchangeable. You remember Hewitt Dixon with Oakland had been a tight end, became a punishing fullback. Robin Earl started as a fullback, now moves in a tight end, an excellent blocker, but not the best receiver in the world as he just gave evidence. Bob Fisher comes in, so we have two tight ends. Bob One Fisher, 85, the rookie from SNU. He had a spectacular catch in the first half. Single setback, that's Walter Payton. Second and ten, the draw call. Payton just explodes through a little opening, short of the first down, down around the 42-yard line. It'll be third down and three. Well, they look enthusiastic and say that. They're coming out good. And, Howard, you made the point earlier in this, in this telecast that last year the Bears started the season with three wins and five losses and yet ended up 10-6 and six and in the playoffs. This year they started 1-3. and three. They're slow starters. Ball marked inside the 43-yard line of the Bucks. James Scott put out to the right on this Bears call. the first down. Roland Harper, he's short. It'll be about a yard and a half, and it'll be fourth down. Another the interesting decision here, Howard. Uh, will he go for it on fourth down? Bud Grant, who Neil Armstrong coached under for many years, went for many of these. But Neil's going to kick it. Yeah, but Bud Grant had a quarterback named Sir Francis Dawkins. <laughs> no, more importantly, he had a fullback by the name of Foreman, 44, who jump over there and make it. Here's Bob Parsons on fourth down. Danny Reese. We anticipated he'll be returning in the safety position, but the Bucks say no. There Danny Reese is. Long snap. The Bucks stay onside. And a tremendous kick, and it took a great pair of bounce. 40-yard punt. 40-yard punt. And Tampa Bay will be in deep trouble. It was Chris Haynes down there for the Bears, and the Bucks will be inside their five. Used to good friends. The Buccaneers elected not to drop a deep man on that punt by Bob Parsons. And Chris Haynes killed the ball at the two-yard line. And that's where Tampa Bay is at the moment. Shadow of their own goalpost. Their first possession here in the second half. Ball goes out to Ricky Bell, and Ricky Bell nailed there, up and then super tackle by Gary Fency. No need to talk about Gary Fencing anymore, except to take note of this. That young man was a wide receiver at Yale. Look at that. Rushing yardage. Tremendous, right? Passing on both sides. Quite an offensive battle. But the game is still in balance, Howard. Three to nothing, and Tampa Bay does not want a turnover here. Fensick actually played in the East-West game on the All-Star East team as a wide receiver, scored a touchdown, catching a pass. Developed his body, worked the weights, and became a strong safe. Williams. Hands off to Eckwood, and Eckwood. 
Just running out of the five-yard line to the seven. Gain of five. And third down at five. There goes a happy face. John McKay looking on. Well, Giff, they threw it on first down from the two. Do you think here at third and four he'll try it again? I think it would be a good call to throw the ball, a good safe pass to one of the backs. We're in the third quarter. Nearly five minutes of the last. Brown now all of a sudden got in defense. They're back showing their allegiance to the Bears. James to put it in the air. No pressure and he had to throw it away. And a flag is down. And it could be a holding call against Steve Wilson once again. But a good play by Doug Williams to get rid of the ball and prevent the safety. Here's Williams under a lot of heat, which he's been under all night tonight. The Bears have a good pass rush. He has nowhere to throw the football. As you see Hampton, 99, come after him. He throws in a good safe spot in the middle of the field. Holding number 50 offense, decline the penalty. Fourth down. Wilson playing with a broken finger on the left hand, holding once again. Naturally declined because Tampa Bay must punt from their own end zone. The Bears will get good field position again. Eddie Walter shy is in to return punts, as you can see. Standing near midfield, Tom Blanchard in his own end zone. Walter Scheid in there because Lusby was hurt for the Bears earlier. Walter Scheid himself playing with a very sore knee. Blanchard looking from the tight formation and it takes a bare bounce. And it will be down near the 40-yard line. Danny Reese got down there quickly to stop that ball from bounding either further deeper into Tampa territory. 32-yard punt. And the Bears will have the ball at Tampa's 40-yard line. The Chicago Bears, following a 32-yard punt by Tom Blanchard, have the football at the 40-yard line of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Chicago Bears have a 3-0 lead. 104 remaining in the third quarter. Brian Boschnagel. Wide receiver, top of your screen, number 84, as the Bears adjust their alignment. Robin Earl in motion, and this is Walter Payton. And Payton upended. Fine defensive play by Cecil Johnson. And we're going to pause five seconds and allow our stations to identify themselves. WLS TV, Chicago. Cecil Johnson battling through a block, drops Walter Payton for a two-yard loss. It'll be second down and 12. The ball back to the 43-yard line. Not much offensive action throughout the first half, in case you just joined us. We're watching the Bears and the Bucks. The Bears leading three to nothing. Fitz, pure timing pattern going out to his wide receiver, Ricky Watts, and Ricky Watts is rounded there. Good defensive play by 25, Curtis Jordan. It's a quick out, and he's playing him awfully tight. Watch Jordan make the reaction. The ball is there, but so is Jordan. That's Jordan hits that way. We noticed that in the game against Los Angeles when he made about five or six unassisted tackles. He became a starter this year. And Darius White was traded to Washington and has performed well. Third down, long 12. Ball inside the 43-yard line of the Bears. Phipps, the blitz is on, and Phipps reads it and fires deep. Bystangle has it. Brian Bystangle has the ball at the six-yard line, and Phipps very calmly under the full blitz delivered. The Tampa Bay Bucks rushed seven men that time. They left their defensive backs man-on-man. -man. Here it is. You'll see the offensive line of the Bears pick up the blitz very nicely. There's Peyton blocking on Dave Lewis. He did throw a good block. A very good block that enabled Phipps to get it off and get it to Bashnagel. And he beat Cottony, 33. Tough coverage, though. You can give sweetness Walter Peyton a credit on that. He yes. took on the biggest linebacker on the field, kept him out of Phipps' space. Phipps was able to deliver. Brian Cut Mark Cottony was back there trying to cover, but again, on the blitz, he was one-on-one -on -one with Bashnagel. First down and goal. The ball at the six-yard line. Phipps on a rollout. Looking in the end zone. He's going to run. Phipps will make it up. Ah. Score. That'll be a hero. And keep in mind, the Bears 
Bears are doing this against the wind, and Tampa Bay will be faced with that same wind in the fourth quarter as they play catch-up. If you look at Neil Armstrong, the right tackle, Dennis Slick must have gotten a good block on Collar because Phipps had the whole corner to himself. Watch him roll to the right here. The right side of the bear line will cave down. The Collar gets a good block. Uh, Collar's blocked there by Lick, and here he is. With Pick Noah Jackson in front of him. Touchdown. Bob Parsons on for the conversion now for the Bears. Parsons drills it through. And there Bob Thomas. Drills it through. And the Bears have a 10 to nothing lead. We'll be back in Chicago right after this message. Harry, you've been gone for hours. Didn't they have a muffler for you? On the second half of the three to nothing lead, they look fired up. And they immediately put seven points more on the scoreboard. Key item was a tremendous putt by Bob Parsons that was down at the two-yard line. The Bucks had to punt. They got a 32-yard effort from their punter, Tom Blanchard, and the Bears took it in. Gary Davis is deep. Bob Thomas hits it. Will be Gary Davis. And his club and is taken away from Davis by Danny Reese. And they almost left it there for the Bears. Tampa playing sloppy football here tonight. They mark it at the 24 yard line. Not often you'll see a John McKay coach team look like this. records in the history of collegiate football. 16 years at USC, three national championships, two Heisman Trophy winners, 40 All-Americans. You could go on and on. Good toss, Ricky Bell. Bell piled up as he moved out over the 25. About three. It'll be second and seven. Gary Campbell defensively there for the Bears. Frank, they still have eight minutes with the prevailing wind behind them. The important thing now for Tampa Bay is to hold together, not panic. Ten points is very little in this league, even though tonight there's been an absolute possible of scoring. They've got to just play their game now, execute. Brad Shear comes in for 72 for the Bears defensively. Tackle Osborne. Interesting, and their team defensively has come to life. Bottom of the pile, Brad Shear, Tom Hicks is also there. I mentioned that George Hallis is sitting next to us in the press box, the grand old bear of the ball, and tonight he was a recipient of a $10,000 gift to the National Football League. It'll go to the DuPage Heritage Gallery in Wheaton, Illinois, for the National Red Grange Archives. Of course, Red Grange, a former bear himself, Wheaton, Illinois, his home. Howard? Of course, I know you were instrumental in bringing that about for that city of Wheaton, Illinois. Well, not really, Frank. Though it's kind of you to say so. It's done because it was deserving. Third and four. Williams rolls out. Gift there by Alan Page. Was that a broken play? I think it was. I think he, he missed the handoff to Eckhart. I don't know who was at fault. And Alan Page, once again, is all over the field. He is so quick. Watch him here. Back into the backfield. Off those blocks. Oh, he's some kind of player. He plays hard all the time, sideline to sideline. He's been some professional. There he is. Having a tremendous night. Fourth down. Blanchard again. He, for the Bears, Lenny Walter Scheid at his own 30. Just didn't get it off. Walter Scheid at the 40-yard line. He got signal the fair catch, and he was pounded there by Norris Thomas. Well, the Bears, again, and I have repeated it over and over, will have good field position. They will begin at their 40-yard line. We'll be back in a moment. No. Standing the third quarter, have the football at their own 40-yard line. Mike Phipps brings them up. The two tight ends are in. That means a single setback ball to Payton. Fisher, 85, the rookie from SMU with a tight end. This is Walter Payton. And Payton finds an opening and just erupts out to the 49-yard line for a gain of nine. Let's put this in perspective, Frank. 
Now they can chew up most of the remaining time in this quarter. So that Tampa Bay will have virtually no time with the prevailing win, which has been a dominant factor in the game. Well, and you're going to chew it up. you got Walter Payton to do it. That's it. They'll keep it on the ground as much as possible. And Tampa Bay helped by, in their last series, keeping it on the ground, Francis. That's right. They didn't throw the ball at all. Second and one. Payton now with only 30 yards. That was his longest game of the night. Pitts fires complete to Dave Williams. He has the first down. Now, when Pitts got rid of the boo birds and all the rest, ever since the end of the first quarter, he's been playing a solid quarterback. He, he really has already. He has no turnovers. He's uh, completed a high percent of his passes, and uh, he's got them moving again. The gain is to the 47-yard line of Tampa Bay, first and 10. And Tampa Bay, 2-2, two and two, coming into tonight's game. Chicago, 1-3, and three, and, of course, in the central division of the NFC. Detroit is 4-1. and one. They fell yesterday from the unbeaten ranks to Atlanta. Walter Payton again. And Payton skips down the sidelines inside the 45 to the 43. Eight of four to the second and six. Neil Colsey took Payton out of bounds. Don't forget, folks, beginning tomorrow night, the championship playoff series. It'll be tomorrow night at Philadelphia, the Astros against the Phils, Mike Schmidt and company. And then Wednesday afternoon at Kansas City, the Royals and George Brett and company against the Yankees and Reggie Jackson and company with Jim Palmer, Billy Martin, and Al Michaels. Bears thinking more about run than pass. Have the two tight ends in again. They get the ball to Peyton on the draw. They go to the outside. Look out. Peyton, another bear first down. Down at the 32-yard line. They'll mark it at the 31. What a treat, Gift, to watch this man play. Not only do you see his quickness, watch his quickness here. He's the only man set back there. There's no hole there up front. He takes it out to the right, which takes extreme quickness. And then he turns it on and gets the first down. Does he something? Did you see that stutter step? <laughs> what people don't realize is you look at Walter Payton there. He is short of stature, but he is strong. He's built like a rock. Walter Payton needs a little over 70 yards to overtake Gale Sayers for the combined offensive leader in the history of this Bear franchise, and that's 61 long years. First and 10. Big toss. Dave Williams. He's in trouble, but he spins back to the inside and still makes a couple out of it. It'll be second and eight. May I add to Francis's point about the strength of Walter Payton? Earlier you saw a brilliant cross block by Payton thrown against Dave Lewis yes. that enabled the big uh, a big play yes. for Chicago. Peyton's upper body strength is where it's at. It's enormous. That's why he can hit a bigger man with his shoulder the way he did. 5'10 and 202 pounds. When he strips, he strips, as we say in boxing, heavy. <laughs> Second down and eight. Ball just inside the 30-yard line of Tampa. Hicks has the time, and the ball deflected once again. Bill Puller, I think, got a call on that one. It'll be third down and eight. That sidearm release remains a problem. Tittle could get away with it. Well, the interesting thing again tonight is we look at Mike Phipps' stats, which have improved since the first quarter. Leroy Selman, who has had 41 sacks in his 56 games he's played as a professional, has no sacks tonight, and now through four games and almost three quarters, he's only had one. And again, a defensive Leroy Selman, you better believe he gets a lot of attention, usually double teamed on almost every block. Randy Crowder, the nose guard, is gone for the season. Phipps back on third down and eight, fires over the middle of Walter Payton, and Payton carries. Linebacker Dewey Salmon with him, but not enough for a first down. It'll be fourth down and about four. Well, he got some shot from Curtis Jordan there, too. And we are going to see the field goal unit headed by Bob Thomas coming on to the field. This will be a pretty interesting kick, if it's uh, as long as the season has been 42 yards. He can kick this distance, oh, yeah. Fran. One a few years ago against Los Angeles, 55 yards. He's taken 39 yards into a win. If he makes it, it'll be a tremendous kick. 
Actually a 44-yard attempt. On his way. It hangs. It's good. Into the wind, Bob Thomas from 44 yards out. The Bears, to the delight and glee of a sellout crowd here at Soldier Stadium, extend their lead. <laughs> he likes it. All right, Bob. He likes it, but he wasn't at all sure. Because it hung there. <laughs> he didn't even have to kick it time. twice, Frank. <laughs> we'll be back. Excuse me. Sets himself up, as you can see, inside the 10-yard line, but not anticipating a long kick by Bob Thomas. Thomas likes to kick it high and get his defenders down under the kick, which he does. Hangs it up there. Gary Davis takes it at the 10. Oh, the Wilson down there quickly for the Bears. Tampa Bay will start from their own 23-yard line. They're down 13 to nothing with 2.46 remaining in the third quarter. Interestingly enough, the last time the Tampa Bay Bucks were shut out in regular season play was last year, last December, by the Chicago Bears. And they were shut out in the playoffs by the Rams. Well, by the way, in the regular season. Time to crank it up. Gifted blocker, and he paves the way for Eckler out of the 30 31. Gain of seven, it'll be second down and three. Buckenstern defensively there on the stop for the Bears, number 58. And Buckenstern, by the way, on that left side linebacker spot. There he is, number 58, is only the third left side linebacker in 25 years. Bill Fortunato and Doug Buffone both spending a lot of time there for so many years. Ricky Bell. And Bell has the first down. And Frank's tackle. Gets out close to the 40-yard line. Give him a chance. He can still do it. Did that in his own. Well, the Bucks are not dead in this game. Two touchdowns puts them up. But they're going to run out of the win here. And they better get the ball in the air while they got a little wind behind them. Johnny Davis stays in. Jerry Eckwood now. In there with Johnny Davis. Davis, of course, 38. Picks up three yards. It'll be second and seven. Both teams keeping the ball on the ground here. In the third quarter. Well, quite frankly, I don't understand why Tampa Bay is keeping the ball on the ground. 13 points down, wind at their back. Second and seven. quarterback in this situation. Doug Williams had no chance at all. Hampton beat Ch uh, Charlie Hanna here. Clean as could be. How did he Charlie Hanna and really he no chance. He didn't have a chance to set up. Oh, did he beat him? He did. Quickly he beat him. That happened the first round draft pick from last year. We talked about it. He came on a Tampa Bay number one draft pick that Chicago got in exchange for Wally Chambers. Setbacks. Gary Davis, of course, a good receiver. Tampa on third and 14. Williams overthrows Gordon Jones. Incomplete will be fourth down. And Williams beginning to react to the pressure. Well, after you get rushed as bad as he's been rushed, you do get a little nervous back there. He's had no protection tonight. Now the crowd is behind its team. A far cry from their <laughs> reactions in the first quarter. All the world loves the winner. Blanchard, who has not had the big foot tonight, out to punt once again for Tampa Bay. Waterside, standing at his 24-yard line. This is Blanchard's seventh punt of the night. Howard, I had an old fullback at Georgia by the name of Tater Bud Godfrey, and he said, aren't folks nice to you when you win? What was his name? Tater Bud. Blanchard, again under pressure, got it off. Flag is down. I think you might have seen the holding. 
65-yard punt. Well, it's not a flag, it's a shoe. As a matter of fact, somebody came out of it. Yeah, there is a flag down. There is one down over there. It looked like right in the middle of the line there was holding on the part of Tampa. What a bad break for Tampa Bay this would be. If you can get a replay of that, I think you'll see it. Here we go. Right in the middle. There it is. Almost a tackle. <laughs> His best effort of the night has been brought back oh, boy. because of the penalty. Holding offense number 59. Andy Hawkins. The offending Tampa Bay Buccaneer. And Blanchard will kick again. Well, that would have been the worst field position the Bears would have had tonight. They've started no worse than their own 36-yard line. That'll put them on the 20. But it won't be. As you can see, Walter Shai, position at his own 31. Match it high and not long. Walter Shai, the Bearcats call for a made at the 38 yard line on a 38 yard punt by Blanchard. There's another flag, Gil. Another flag. Oh no. But this one is down the field. This could very well be on the uh, Bears. Three again tonight, Ben Dreith. He's been busy. Preliminary indication. First the foul is going to go against the Bears. against Tampa Bay they've been penalized whether the third penalty against the here's a personal call. foul unnecessary roughness on the receiving team number 83 penalty against Chris Haynes the Bears have been penalized three times tonight for 30 yards Tampa Bay six times for 60 yards and the Bears will have their worst field position thus far of the night they'll start from their own 22 yard line Five yep. seconds remaining in the third quarter. That's what I was going to say. You were right, <laughs> right ahead of me. Walter Payton, the single setback as the Bears continue with their two tight end offense. Payton, good body left, and Payton gets out over the 25 to the 27, a pickup of five. It'll be second down at five, and the final seconds are ticking down here in the third quarter. There it is. You're watching another exclusive of ABC Sports. That's the end of the third quarter. The score, the Bears 13, the Buccaneers nothing. We'll be back. Sunday, they're the wildest truckers on the road. You must be out of your mind. And they're leading an army of cops on a cross-country chase. I hate truckers. <laughs> Legends die hard, apparently. <laughs> Bears have the football. Second down at five. Roland Harper. Single setback now for the Bears at the 35. Activated only this afternoon. After being out for the full 79 season. Harper surges forward out over the 30 to the 32. It'll be third down and two. Frank, they are using basically the same offense now Vermeil used when the Eagles creamed the Giants 35 to 3. One back, two tight ends. Explain the advantage of that, Frank. Well, the advantage of both tight ends, you can either run strong or weak, right or left, because the defense cannot overshift one way or the other. It gives a great back like a Peyton or a Montgomery the freedom to go either left or right. And it's a pretty good ball control offense, although now I'm not sure they use it. Yeah, they got both tight ends in. His progress was marked at the 32, so we're caught third down and one. Payton, he has the first down, cuts back, and gets out to the 38-yard line. But well, we got a flag. Yeah. Another flag down. Maybe on Robin Earl. Could be a holding for the Holding indicated against the Bears. And old Noah is upset. That's Noah Jackson, 65 with the Bears. Number 
91. Robiner. Uh, Howard, you're right. The tight end. Right on. All right, the third quarter stats. Notice the way Chicago suddenly assumed domination in total yards, in rushing yards slightly, passing yards decisively, and now they lead in time of possession, where Tampa Bay earlier on had held it conclusively. Tampa Bay only able to generate 60 yards through the air. Third down, 11. Bears from their own 22. Snips trying to move out of the pocket. Had the ball jarred loose. And it's taken by Leroy's little brother, Dewey. So, so Giff, you see what Robin Earl's penalty cost him. Yep. Phipps is doing the right thing. He didn't want to put it up for grabs, but he held it too loosely. And these kind of turnovers can turn games around. Bill Kohler stripped the ball. Selman picked it up. The Bucks have the football inside the 25-yard line of the 24 of the Bears. They're down 13 to nothing. Williams in and out of the hands again of Gordon Jones. And I call the throw. That's a very good throw by Williams. Gordon Jones should have caught it. They do drop an incredible number of passes. That's why he goes to Jimmy Childs. <laughs> Coming in from the bench is called by Bill Nelson. There's Dewey Salmon. One of nine Salmon boys. Single set back is Ricky Bell. Ryan is down and Williams is down at the 32 yard line. And that's Dan Hampton. Lost seven yards, but again, a flag is down and Dan Hampton was in there again. Is having a field day or evening. Well, if it's a holding call, I would imagine they will decline the penalty. Holding indicated against Tampa. Holding offense finish number 75. Decline the penalty. The guy he's chewing up is Charlie Hanna. Yes, he is. That holding call was not against Charlie Hanna, however, against Dave Brevis. Well, in this situation, Howard, Williams has still got two downs to make the first down. They're not going to try to take the field goal. He's got third and about 17 yards. Again, the intermediate pass, the 10 to 12-yard pass is the, is the call to make. Third down, 17. Ball up the 31-yard line of the Bears. Williams fires for Higgins. He was well covered. Pinsick was back there. That was Terry Smith. It'll be fourth down and out of the range of Bowery your premium. Well, you've got two guys to give the defensive game ball to, Page and Fencer. And how about Hampton? And Hampton. Those stats are really sad. I feel sorry. Well, the Bear defensive line has pressured Williams the entire night. He has not had time to throw the football. And that's why on that play, I'd rather see him go for an intermediate pass than a 20-yard pass, which he tried to do. Now he's got to go for the 18, 19-yard pass. It would have been a field goal attempt of some 47 yards. That apparently out of the range of Bowie. A premium on fourth down. The Bucks will go. Over the middle is taken by Jones, and he breaks the tackle, has the first down at the 10. A clutch play by quarterback Williams to... Gordon Jones, who has dropped three passes tonight. I tell you, that could be the biggest play the Bucks have had this year. Well, they gave, right him, they gave him protection here. He had time to throw. He's got good vision. He hits Gordon Jones, but Gordon Jones is still short of the first down. Watch the move he makes on Plank to get the first down. And Plank. And it was short, Fensick short who brought tackling. him down. First down at the 10-yard line. They need to throw it right here again. Gary Eckwood hit by Gary Fensick, who's playing a football game tonight for the Bears. Young man coming off knee surgery of a year ago. Ankle surgery from a basketball injury. And there's a yard loss. He was up there quickly to stop Eckwood. Howard's former student. You taught him well, coach. <laughs> 
think you've been working them over in a football sense. From the Bears, 11 yard line. The Bucks down 13 to nothing. We're in the fourth quarter. 13 minutes remaining in the game. against Alan Ellis. Ellis lost his footing. Incomplete. This is critical. They wasted the critical first down by running the ball. They did. And, that's, and uh, now he's only got to, they must score. And this is a big, big game for Tampa Bay because John McKay has to regroup his team. And they want to get to a position of only one behind the Lions, whom the Falcons demolished yesterday. And a field goal means nothing, Howard. Nothing. Got Absolutely to the nothing. So they got two, two downs to get the touchdown. Third down. Inside 13 minutes. We're in the fourth quarter, and Williams is sacked. And the Bears have the football. Osborne was in on the sack. The ball took a bear bounce and into the arms of Alan Page. Alan Page and Gary Fensick. They should walk off together. 82 and 45. Though 45 drop back. Watch the pressure on poor Doug Williams. He has no chance to throw the ball down to the end zone. Hartenstein, 73, will get a good rush. Osborne inside will get a good rush. There comes Osborne, there comes Hartenstein, and they've got him. Hartenstein gets him. The Chicago Bears taking a page out of Tampa Bay's book of a year ago, playing superb defense here in the second half. They have the football. We'll be back. Here comes precious cargo. Jim Osborne was all over Tampa Bay's Doug Williams, forcing the sack, the ensuing fumble, and Alan Page was there. The Bears have the football. They have a 13 to nothing lead. 12.46 remaining in the game, and the Bears will move from their 21-yard line. Walter Payton, single setback, as the Bears stay with their two tight end offense. Oh, boy. Payton turns on the speed out to the 32-yard line. I'd like to tell you right now, starting tomorrow and continuing Wednesday and Thursday on ABC's World News Tonight, a special assignment, Future Wars, fighting on the electronic battlefield. ABC News examines technological breakthroughs and sophisticated weapons that will affect all of our futures and the security of our country. Plus all the news of the day on ABC's World News Tonight, here on ABC. Peyton gets the first down out to the 32-yard line. Peyton's up to 61 yards on the night, Frank. Now he's getting into respectable figures. You can see the spirits of Tampa Bay sagging. 31 more yards, and he will take over the all-time yardage leader for the Bears. That, of course, from Gale Sayers. This is Peyton again. The whole offensive line charge now of the Bears is taking out the defensive line of the Bucks. The second half, the offensive line of the Bears has, has dominated this game, and the defensive line of the Bears has dominated the Bucks. Offensive line the entire game. 82, Page. 89, Hampton. 45, Fence. They're the heroes of this game. They really are. They mark the ball at the 39-yard line. Second and a long two. Roland Harper comes in, number 35. Harper in 78 was a 900-yard gainer himself before the knee injury. At, just before the 79 season. Walter Payton. He'll be close to a first down, perhaps less than a yard short. David Lewis made the stop. Show you what's happening, Gibb. Sweetness in his last seven carries has picked up 50 yards. So you can see fatigue overtaking Tampa Bay. It also shows if he gets up just a little help from his offensive line, he can run. Now bring out the yard markers for the measurement. is short and as they bring the yard markers back we'll tell you this telecast is presented by the authority of the national football league it's intended for the private use of our audience any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the national football league is prohibited third down inches if usually in situations like this as you know with inches to go, they have one play they want to go with. The last time they were in this situation, they went with the quarterback's knee. Be interesting to see if they do the same thing again. I doubt it. All right, I think they will. Mike so, Phipps brings the Bears up. Their short yardage offense, of course. Three, three, three. Phipps goes with the quarterback's knee. He should have the 
necessary distance for the first. His surge carrying him at least the few inches he needed. Thank you for the loan, Howard Casal and Frank Tarkenton. And next week, after Howard has covered about eight zillion miles, we'll be in Denver. And I'm not understating it. I don't think you are really something else. Denver Broncos against the Washington Redskins. And Craig Morton came off the bench yesterday to lead Denver to a 19 to 16 win over Cleveland. Well, with that remarkable play by Gratishaw. Yes. Gratishaw to Jackson to Gratishaw. There's now grinding away on the clock. First and 10, the ball inside their own 43. This is Roland Harper. Down goes Harper. David Lewis. Not enough blitz, but reading the play, and another flag is down. Best give and go play I ever saw. Well, that's an interesting as a late, late flag, and it could very well be against the Bucks for some kind of personal foul. Let's see. Personal foul against Tampa. Well, this is a young football team, Tampa Bay, and they're showing it tonight. Here's the call, referee Ben Drive. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness on a defense number 56. That's a first down. Funny thing about this league and this game, Fran. They talk about youth, and yet a very young Tampa Bay team almost got to the Super Bowl last year. This was supposed to be the year that the Jets would arrive. Yep. And both the Jets are winless, and this team is now going to be under 500. Tampa Bay now penalized seven times on the night for 75 yards. On first and 10, at Tampa's 43-yard line, the ball goes to Peyton. Peyton inside the 40, a gain of three. It'll be second and seven. The ball at the 39-yard line. David Lewis on the stop defensively. Point is, Frank, developing maturity may be undoing them, not helping them. You know, another interesting point, if the Bears hold on and win tonight, do you realize there'll be a four-way tie for second place in the Central Division of the NFC? And guess who one of those four teams will be? The Green, Green Bay, Bay Packers. Packers. The poor Bart Starr has been under such fire down there, and he's got his Packers in second place. Green Bay, of course, a winner yesterday in their very first game of the season. They beat this Bear team. With Chester Markle. Second of six. The ball at the 39-yard line of Tampa. That's big Robin Earl in motion. And off his ball with Peyton. Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho! Watch out if Walter Peyton gets inside the 25 and the crowd loves it. Once again, stutter step. Is he something or not? He is so good. Uh, unofficially, Walter Payton has 91 yards on the night. His combined offense has exceeded that of Gale Sayers. He's the all-time combined offensive weapon the Bears have had in 61 years. Look at him break tackles. Break backs, break tackles. Just get him to the line of scrimmage, they say, and I'll go from there, and he does. And he has accomplished these amazing statistics in just this, his sixth year. And in this half, Frank, in 11 carries, he's picked up 80 yards. Uh, he will do it rather quickly if you give him just the slightest gap. Ball at Tampa's 22-yard line. Bears keeping the offensive team at Tampa on the bench. Inside the 20. And we're in three. It'll be second seven. Excuse me, Gibb. We're inside nine minutes. Well, you'll notice that time he went to the left, and that's where Leroy Selman lives. And you don't go around his end too often. He's been making most of his yards around the right side. I would think the Bears ought to stay to the right and stay away from Mr. Selman. Neil Armstrong, who started his coaching many, many years ago, was a teammate, by the way, of Bud Grant's with the Philadelphia Eagles. A good offensive end at Texas A&M. Coached up in Canada. They'll mark it right at the 15. Another gain of three. It'll be third down. A long three to go for the first. Curtis Jordan made that stop where Peyton might have been in the end zone. Swing this is on a roll, Howard. Yeah, he's on a roll. Third and three at the 15. Up to 96 yards unofficially. Scott comes out. A wide receiver for the Bears. Ricky Watts comes in. Both Scott and Watts suffering from nagging injuries in the early season. Third and three. Peyton just bowling ahead. Yeah, he'll be close to a first down. The second 
seconds are ticking off. Well, if he doesn't make it, a field goal puts it out of reach. That's 100 yards for Walton Payton. That's what they're going to do. They're going to kick the field goal. 100 yards for Payton. He got 89 of them. He has 89 of them here in the second half. Here's Bob Thomas. He's kicked a pair tonight. One from 44 yards against the wind. One from 30 yards out. And Bob Thomas is out to kick again. And the Bears decide their alignment is not right. They call timeout. 6.49 remaining in the game. We'll be back. The Boeing 747. The Boeing 727. The Boeing 707. The Boeing 737. And soon, two new airplanes. The 757 and the 767. The Boeing family. The world's favorite way to fly. The world feels a whole lot better when the people of the world all get together. The world feels a whole lot better when we all get together. Look! It is such a big world. See! All the places and the faces. See! Jetliners have done more to jet the world together than anything ever made by man. The world is a whole lot better when we all get together. Tomorrow, the Houston Astros meet the Philadelphia Phillies in Game 1. Wednesday, the Yankees and Royals begin their championship series live on ABC. The Chicago Bears have their field goal unit on the team. They have a 13 to nothing lead, 6.49 remaining in the game. They had to use a timeout. They looked around in the huddle and said, hey, we don't have enough folks here. So Look Bob at that. Thomas is out there now. Peyton is triple the yardage rushing of the opposition team in this half. 29-yard attempt on its way. And through the uprights. Good night. Yeah, Thomas, third field goal of the night. And the Bears move out on top, 16 to nothing. Returning to Soldier Field in Chicago right after this message. Points to extend their lead. 16 0 over the Bucks. They use six minutes and one second. Gary Davis is deep. Bob Thomas puts the foot to it, driving Gary Davis into the end zone. Gary wow. Davis is in the open. I told you about this guy. And he's pursued there by John Skabinski. Gary Davis puts Tampa Bay into Bear territory. 54-yard return by the scampering Gary Davis. At least that's twice tonight that Gary Davis has given Tampa Bay field position. It's too little, too late, doubtless now, Francis, but this guy's a player. Well, he made a good move there. Obviously, he got some good blocks on the special teams, and he turns it on. John Skabinski corrals Gary Davis at the 47-yard line of the Bears. to Jones and another flag is down. Well, it's going to be a holding penalty if we want to go battling inside the 30 to 28, but again, the flag is down. I don't know, Jeff, who they're going to call it on, but two guys were holding Jim Osbert in a bear hug. <laughs> you know, this is a little strange for Tampa Bay. The last two games they've played, their offense clicked decidedly better than their defense, but tonight they have generated little or no offense at all. Well, the Chicago defense had something to do with yes. this. The guys we well, they made have, have been sure. tremendous. We may call this only oh, offense number 75. Holding against Dan Dave Revis. But they also had a big day offensively against the Dallas Cowboys. They have a pretty fair defense. This is tough for the good folks in Tampa Bay in that whole area. Boy, they've given their hearts to this team, and they're looking for a playoff berth this year. I don't it's think a long way to go. I don't think any city has supported a franchise, an expanding franchise like Tampa Bay. They've really got behind this party. On first to 20. Williams, ball was bobbled and then dropped by Gordon Jones. Tonight also marks 
the first time in Dave Williams' career, or rather Doug Williams' career, that he's been sacked twice in a game. Well, that young man has had no chance tonight. He hasn't gotten the protection from his offensive line. There's no quarterback in the world that, that can throw with the pressure he's had on him. Second down, 20. to Jerry Eckwood and a flag is down. And I think that could be defensive pass interference. You got two flags, Giff. One's in the back seat. That's right. Eckwood was being buffeted about as he tried to cut it across the middle of the field. And another flag went down back around Dave Williams. Once Doug again, Williams. you Defense saw it. holding 58, roughing the passer, number 99 on the offense. We're going to replay it. Tremendous Off pressure again pass. on Doug Williams. Guilty of now both penalties. Both penalties were against the defense, weren't they, Giff? Roughing the passer, they call, and they call defensive holding. Alan Page again. It's 99 who committed the penalty. Hampton, but they got to take the penalty. That's both penalties were against the defense, and they're going to mark it off the 15 yarder. Pastor number 99 defense. First down. And Doug Williams is limping a little bit. Doug Williams is limping. We've been watching him. He was really plastic. Same. Moving gingerly up behind the center. Ricky Bell, single setback on the first down. My goodness. Sacked again with the 44 yard line. Alan Page. Defense is just forgetting run all together there, just turning it loose and blowing in there. Alan Page in there again, among this, others. This is horrible pass protection. Everybody's in there, but Alan Page is really something. Hampton's back there with him, too. Poor Williams has nowhere to go. A loss of 12. Fourth sack of the night on Williams. Chuck Casino comes in at quarterback for Tampa Bay. Well, I don't blame McKay for doing this. Save, save Williams. Yep. Chuck Casino, of course, second-year man out of Penn State. He was a fifth-round draft pick last year. Set numerous records at Penn State, and we are going to have a delay of game and the change of quarterbacks. When it goes wrong, it goes wrong. Hey, when it starts to go wrong against the Bears, look out. Yep. Offense delay. Chuck Pacino was a fifth-round draft pick. He was part of the Earl Campbell trade of draft picks. How about a second and 28 call from the coach on the sideline? I don't know what you, what you could do in this situation. Pacino, his second NFL pass of his career, reflected by Jim Osborne. It'll be third down at 28, which is not a whole lot better than second and 28. This doesn't look like a team that lost 34-13 to the Vikes. Not in the second half, it didn't. They came together. This could turn their season around, the Bears. 34-13 to the Vikes, 38-3 to the Steelers. That can happen. Yes, that can happen. Doug Williams testing the leg that was skippy there for...
Walter. High and long. Walter shot from his 14 yard line. 46 yard punt and Walter side. Moves it out to the 22 yard line. Eight yard return for Walter Scheid. About five minutes now remaining in this game. We'll be back in a moment. I make one trick shot in a light beer commercial and everything. While we were away, Mike Phipps came over to the sidelines, went back out on the field. He received a standing ovation. <laughs> Such is the nature of the capricious fans of pro football. They almost ran him out of town last week. At boxing, at baseball. There's at the 22-yard line, first and 10. Peyton has had a tremendous second half. Stays on his feet. Gets out over the 25 to the 27. Gain of five, second and five. You know, Neil Armstrong doesn't need any advice from us, Fran, but I wouldn't want to risk Peyton with injury at this stage. The game's in the bag. I agree with you, Howard. And I, as we look at the Bears here in this game, they've got a big game coming up next week in Bloomington, Minnesota, against the Vikings, who two weeks ago beat them handily here. Both teams will be two and three in that game. And a very important divisional game for both. Second down and five. Peyton now with 105 yards, 94 coming in this half. Peyton once again. He has the first down, or very close to it. He might be perhaps a yard, half a yard short. Curtis Jordan made the stop. Quick reminder for Francis and you fans looking into the West Coast coming up immediately after the game. That's incredible. Some fans down below us are holding up number one, number one. We're number one. <laughs> At two and three, they've got a touch of a way to go. <laughs> what a night they're number one. Yes, the Bears get their first down. Well, as you said a while ago, Howard, it's a long way to go. 16-game season. 11 more weeks. Best evidence is what the Bears did last year, That's coming right. from three and five. And Tampa Bay will, will, will be in it all the way. I think the Bears will be in it all the way. Bears next Sunday will be at Minnesota. Green Bay will be at Tampa. Bears first and 10 at their own 32-yard line. Walter Payton again gets the call, and he's been the workhorse here in the second half. The story has been the tenacious Bear defense headed by Alan Page. Alan Page now in his 14th year. This Bear organization has a strong Minnesota flavor to it, Howard. Jim Fink's the general manager here. Bill McGrain is here. The equipment manager, Ray Hurley. The head coach, Neil Armstrong. That's the right. defensive coordinator, Buddy Ryan. They all came out of what Bud is thinking as he watches Allen tonight. Well, and Bud, Mike Lynn. <laughs> Bud is uh, probably uh, out fishing somewhere. I doubt if he's even watching the game. I bet Bud is enjoying it. He gave Minnesota a lot of good years, Allen Page did. There he is. Right up. Get him out now, Neil. That's enough. Get him out of there. Hey, inside the Bucks 45 yard line. Running over his own men to do so. He's right. now up to 134 yards, 123 this half. As you look again at that last burst. And he almost broke this. He's trying to get a block out of Robin Earl. He runs right up Robin Earl's back. That's good. He's Walter Payton's coming out of the game to a standing ovation. I think he deserves it. The man who tonight passed, as Frank has told you, Gail Sayers, all-time bear record for Russia. That's for combined offense. Oh, correct. Here's Dave Williams. And Williams does it to the Bucks this time. Reggie Lewis on the stop. And we have moved down to the two-minute warning. As Dave Williams is close to another bear first down. We'll be back in Chicago in a moment. Peter Payton has made the difference. Payton once again. Gets the first down, but a flag is down. And he's going to work against the Chicago Bears. Our staff.
statistician and research man Mike Swanson coming in for Jerry Klein tonight and spotter of course Steve Bazika. Holding offense number 70. Penalty against Dennis Lick and I might as well throw in some few kudos for the engineers and the technical staff of ABC. We are spread all over the country as you well know with the baseball playoffs coming up. Texas Oklahoma coming up on Saturday. Cameramen, technicians, they're really being put to the test this week. Second down and ten. Dave Williams gets into trouble, tries to cut back, and is taken there by Mark Cotney. While you're passing out kudos, Frank, I'd like to pass along our congratulations and best wishes to one of our ace cameramen, Tommy O'Connell. He's getting married on Saturday. Lots of luck. I presume that's Tommy up there. Well, right next to us is George Papa Bear Hallis, and I know that he is happy and relieved tonight with the performance of his Bears. What a remarkable man. He's, oh, what is he, 86 now, and he looks better? Oh, he's just a great man. He looks great. One of the true pioneers of this league, and we're all indebted for him. It all began as the Cater Staley's back in 1920, and here comes Dave Williams once again, and he is swarmed over by the Bucks at the line of scrimmage. Glad you remember the Decatur Staley's, Frank. You're out there opening game. Papa Bear's quarterback was Chuck Dress. Now, Giff, you don't have to take that. I heard you talking with Sid Luckman today about that. I, I really didn't believe that, but I guess it's true. Sid Luckman and I went to high school again. Oh, I've heard that. Now, Giff, tell me the truth. How good was Bronco Nagurski? He was big and good. <laughs> Don't forget tomorrow the Major League Championship Series. Houston against Philadelphia at Philadelphia tomorrow night. Wednesday afternoon, the American League kicks off. The Yankees at Kansas City. Wednesday night, it's Houston at Philadelphia. And so we'll go for the remainder of the week. Covering the Yankee games, Al Michaels, Billy Martin, Jim Palmer. Covering the National League, our regular team of Keith Jackson, Don Drysdale, and yours truly. So be with us. On fourth down, we see Bob Parsons. Danny Reese drops for the Bucks. 59 seconds remaining in the game. I wonder if Reggie will be wondering what Billy is saying in the booth. <laughs> <laughs> this is what? Reggie's first 300 season, isn't it? The major leagues, I believe. Mm -hmm. He's had a lot of year. For a long period of time, he carried those Yanks. Parsons manages to get it off. I think it was just slightly deflected. Tremendous pressure there by the Bucks. Norris Thomas is in on the rush. He might have even got a hand on it. And they'll mark it at the 11-yard line. There's Norris Thomas in a Dolphin uniform a year ago. There's Parsons. He has trouble handling the snap. He almost gets it blocked. Slightly deflected, but it ended up in pretty good shape down the 11-yard line, but it doesn't make a lot of difference, Alan. No. None at all. And another reminder, next Monday night, we'll be in Denver for the Washington Redskins and the Denver Broncos. Casino <laughs> is buried, bobbled. The first ball, and that could have even been picked off. It's intercepted. Intercepted, I believe. That's pain. I swear he's just gotten out of Notre Dame. He's only 22. 35 years old. The only lineman in the history of this league to be named the most valuable player of the league. There he is here. The ball's going to slip out of Christina's hands. He's got two blockers on him. It just slipped out of his hands. It hits the headgear of Rodell's. And Alan Page has got an interception. And he hasn't had many of those in his that's, career. That's, uh, a, in a vague way, a replica of the Gratishaw play. <laughs> tell you the kind of condition he's in. He recently ran a 26-mile marathon, three hours and 57 minutes. Now that, at 35 years old, and his condition is, that is remarkable. And Giff, you know what the Bears gave up to get him? $100. And on top he of it, the he's Bears got away law. Or is he practicing? He's practicing yes, law. He's he a lawyer. That's great. Oh, he's, he's terrific. Great thing to see. We'll remember this individual effort all year long. 
his interception. Look at the satisfaction yeah. <laughs> written in his face. Puts huh? the Bears on the one-yard line of Tampa Bay, and it has not been Tampa Bay's night. Tampa Bay last year with their 10 and 6 record. The Bears also had a 10 and 6 record, but Tampa Bay had a better divisional record. And there has to be ejected, man. Bob alerts him up wherever you are. If Page can do it, you can do it. Come back, work. And this man came back with a pretty good second half. Standing ovation. Yeah, what do you think Neil Armstrong could be telling Mike Phipps at this time? <laughs> and don't forget about the playoff. Point differentials count. They do. They go ahead and score. Oh, that's great. What remains of a capacity crowd of 64,000 is chanting. They want the Bears to get into the end zone. Jerry Eckwood. Eckwood. That's a little move on. 
moves inside the 40 to the 43 yard line. They call another timeout. Yeah, it's hard to understand. It really is. Well, they won't call anymore. Because they're gone. I mean, that's a formality that one can do without. There. Well, the McKay calls it. Remain. I saw him give the signal to the sideline to call the timeout, which they did. Well, putting it in perspective, the game is lost, of course, but Chuck Cusina seeing his real first action, and I'm sure that John McKay would like to feel him, have him feel that heat out there for a while, and get used to it. There might be a time when he has to come in for real. There's Barry Bucks. And so they did. Payton. He had himself a night. It's lonely on top, Walter. Could be the final play of the game. 12 seconds remaining. Because the stop could be incompletion. Cena puts it up. And it is stopped. Oh, they got a flag down there. The flag is down. First the 17-yard line. Jimmy Giles. And the penalty should start back at the line of scrimmage, 15 yards. Jimmy Giles, the leading receiver for the Bucks a year ago, and a great all pro at that, has one reception on the night for five yards. Well, Howard, maybe McCain knew what he was doing. Foul, unnecessary roughness, number 45. The personal foul for the Bears. Chicago tonight penalized 105 yards. Tampa Bay penalized 90 yards. Alan Page, Jeff Casino, has run out the clock. This is Ricky Bell. This ball game is over. To the delight of Bear fans. Well, as the Chicago Bears go to a two and three mark, Tampa Bay goes to two and three. And there is a man who had himself a show tonight. He really did. And quite fittingly, the last hit was made by Gary Fenton. It ended as it began. Stay tuned now for ABC News Nightline, 30 minutes after the game, or 11.30 on the West Coast over most of these ABC stations. Once again, the final score of the Bears, 23, the Buccaneers, nothing. Travel arrangements made through and a promotion to be paid by United Airlines. <laughs>